This week's episode is sponsored by HIF Kitchens, the number one online kitchen supply company in Scotland, where you can buy your whole kitchen online with all the prices on show, no gimmicks, just straightforward good deals for high quality kitchens and appliances. You can buy your kitchen from the comfort of your own home instead of getting pestered by pushy salespeople. Check out HIF Kitchens, the number one online kitchen supplier in Scotland. I suffer from homicidal ideation. I'm always thinking about killing people. Yeah, I've been shot, I've been stabbed, I've been set on fire, I'm a well-known OG. Alfie Lewis is my best friend. He's telling people I'm getting me dick sucked in jail. Obviously the reputation you had, Stephen, everything you've done from the 80s and 90s and learnt the nicknames, the devil, the tax man, a lot of people are saying now that you're a grass. Yeah. What is this story? Is it, can we clear that up or is it yeah, true yeah, or is it yeah, false? Yeah. Listen, listen. It's difficult for me to talk about because it's so unpleasant. Mm -hmm. You understand? To bring back a lot of emotion. It... How no, did... no, 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 it's not, no, James, it's not emotion, it's shame. Yeah. It, it, it's shame, yeah, and embarrassment, yeah, of how barbaric I was. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Liverpool's Stephen French. First of all, Stephen, I just want to say thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. How are you, brother? I'm pretty good, you know, pretty good. I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's the power of social media, yeah, right? One of my followers was one of your followers, got in touch with me, and he's hooked us up. And I've seen some of your stuff, yeah, right? And they're calling you, yeah? The English Joe Rogan, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, I'll take yeah. that any day. Yeah, any day. Let's see if we can get it up to 10 million, eh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you've got a very fascinating story. You, you owned the streets of Liverpool in the 80s, 90s to earn the reputation where people call you the devil, the tax man. You've been in prison. People have tried to shoot you, setting fire. You've been a world champion kickboxer. You've, you've got yeah. a lot of stuff going on just now with personal issues, which we'll all touch on. You're very well known. I've, I've had countless, thousands of messages for you to come on this show because I know you've been kind of not under the radar. You're kind of picking your name back up again. You're well, what what it is, yeah, right, is I was released from prison on the 29th of December, 2016. Yeah, and when I came out, I wrote a 33-page document called Institutional Racism and Malfeasance on Merseyside. Sent it to the Prime Minister, sent it to the Justice Minister, sent it to the Home Secretary, yeah, right, because of what happened to me, yeah? So we, 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 we'll, we'll go into that. But where I'd like to start is at the beginning, mm -hmm. yeah? Now, the interesting thing about me, James, is when anybody starts off, especially those in authority in the media, they start off with... 1971, when I was done for UTMV, which is the unauthorised taking of a motor vehicle. Bear in mind, I didn't learn to drive until I was 23. But I want to take it back a little bit earlier than that. I want to take it back to the 10th of December, 1965. And I'm a six-year-old kid. My mum's had a nervous breakdown, and we've ended up in there. Uh, we've ended up in care. Sorry, not in care. I've got there's five of us. I've got two brothers and two sisters. Yeah, yeah. My th my three elder siblings. They look white. Me, me, and my sister. Yeah, right. Look mixed race. And they couldn't foster us at that time. So we went to. 
a home cold. Men love having you. Up and veil men love having you. Child assessment centre. Yeah. Now, I was there in the 60s. In the 80s, it was closed down as part of Operation Care. Yeah. And there was about 29 arrests. 12 people went to prison, yeah, for physical and sexual abuse on children. Now, just to, to give you the background, because I regressed. I forgot all about that childhood stuff. Yeah, right? When I see in the psychiatrist, yeah, right, after they came out of prison, yeah, right, he told me that I'd had some regressed memories. What brought those memories back to me, James, was February 2016, I'm on B-Wing, HMP Liverpool, better known as Walton. Yeah, and my friend, an OG called Spencer Benjamin, gets a telephone call from a guy called Eddie Atta. And Eddie Atta tells him, I know that Frenchy raped this girl and they're going to change him into the next Jimmy Savile. Which means I'm going to get all kinds of sex charges. Spencer comes and tells me, I go back to me cell and I'm lying there, get right? And then the memories come back to me, yeah, of Wilton Vale. All I could remember was it was Wilton. And it was a children's home. That's all I could. Rem that's all I could remember. Yeah, and there was a Christmas party. Yeah, and a celebrity came to give us presents. Yeah, and I got a red fire engine with a yellow ladder and a silver bell. And if I listened closely, I could still hear that bell. Yeah. The celebrity that gave me the fire engine, yeah, then attempted to touch me. And I smashed him in the face with this fire engine over his left eye. First man that I ever made bleed. Yeah, and it's in my child files. I brought my child files. I made a subject access request to Liverpool Child Services to get my, my files when I came out of prison. And I made a complaint to Merseyside Police. I've actually got a case number in, in Operation U Tree, right? Because when the police investigated it, they found I was at that home for 10 days. And in that 10 day period, Jimmy Savile was there. Yeah. And when he was there, I smashed him in the face. So what happened? Why didn't I mention this in my book? Why did I wait till I came out of prison? The memories were regressed. It was only when I went into prison and got told that I was get, be getting turned into Jimmy Savile that it triggered the trauma that I was going through at the time, triggered the old trauma and, it, and the memories came back. Yeah, it's also in my files that I told the professionals in the service what had happened and what I'd do. And I was called a dirty little lying black bastard. Yeah. And I was carted off to a home in Speak. I was given to a couple of uh, 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 foster parents in Speak. He was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Paraplegic. Yeah, right. And his wife, his wife was okay. And he had his car modified where he had a, a thing on a steering wheel so we could turn it. Their kick was to tie me over the Welsh, well, a Welsh dresser. Yeah? Hands over the dresser, ankles over the dresser, and whip me with curtain wire to get me to be quiet about what was going on. Now, in the children's homes, yeah, and I like to make it clear, because in, in the equity say, I said that I was sexually abused. I wasn't sexually abused, I was physically abused.
Yeah, right. And those that tried to sexually abuse me, yeah, it's the first one that I ever made bleed was Jimmy Savile. Now, when I when I broke this story in the Liverpool Daily Post and Echo when I came out of prison and I went to the police, yeah, right, right, for historic stuff, because I decided, James, yeah, right, in prison, that when I came out, I was gonna take all these services on. Merseyside Police Services, Mercy and Cheshire Crown Prosecution Services, Liverpool Social Services, the Probation Services and the Prison Services, because each and every one of them, yet yeah, right, abused me. But what I decided I was gonna do, I was gonna use the own rules, regulations, guidelines, protocols and principles, and I was gonna beat them with their own stick. And I outlined this all in a 33-page document called Institutional Racism and Malf Misfeasance on Merseyside. So now, this is, I've gone into this ch children's home, yeah, 10th of December, and they've moved me on the 23rd. Everywhere's closed down. Nobody does anything. They've moved me on the 23rd because of the incident. Then I'm on a, a care medical round until I'm 11, yeah? I went in as a six-year-old altar boy, yeah? I came out as a very angry young man, yeah, right? And they were the origins of, of where my violence comes from. Now, I've sought, I've sought professional help since I've come, out, come, come back. And I see a psychiatrist, I pay to see a psychiatrist once a week. Yeah, yeah, to help me work through these issues, yeah, right, of, of why I, um, I suffer from homicidal ideation. I'm always thinking about killing people. Yeah, now it's the opposite of suicidal ideation, people that always want to kill themselves. Yeah, this started for me. Yeah, in the care homes, where I developed two coping mechanisms. The first coping mechanism that I developed, yeah, right, is a time and date stamp everything. Because I was branded a dirty little black liar at six, year, six years of age. So I can independently verify and prove anything that I'm going to say to you. Right, because that's deep, that, that, that me being a liar is deep in my psyche. They did it to me when I was a child. And the other one was picking up a weapon and whacking people. Yeah, right, and they get to leave them alone. That was another coping me mechanism that I developed in the care homes. Now, the second coping mechanism is violence. Yeah, and that'll get you into prison. Yeah, but, but I never went to prison until I was in my 50s. Yeah. I made violence pay for me. I'm 11 years of age and I've gone back to my mum, yeah? And I'm a pretty bright kid at school, yeah, right? And I'm online to pass the 11 plus. Then comes my first interaction with Merseyside's finest. Merseyside Police Force, they were called then. They're now called Merseyside Police Service. They were a police force back then. In Chinatown in Liverpool, there's a church called the Blackie, yeah? It was a youth club. Me and my mates were on the way to the youth club. The jeep pulls up, there's a sergeant in it, yeah, yeah, and they get out. I've got my parker on, I've got my monkey boots on, yeah, and we're going to the, to, to the club. He says, what, what are you doing? He puts his hand in my hood and he comes out with a set of car keys, yeah. And he said, you go and equip to steal cars. I said to him, you put them in my hood, they, they, they weren't there, yeah. And he whacked me in the mouth with a, cho a torch. The back teeth are still missing to this day. Went on the floor, Mars 
cascading with blood, yeah, right? I'm an 11 year old kid and this cop is standing over me, yeah, yeah, right? And he terrorized me, never forget him. A big, <laughs> he was a jock, yeah, yeah, <laughs> ginger hair, green eyes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scottish bastard. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, not all coppers are bastards, yeah, yeah right? <laughs> No, let's 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 keep the language clean, yeah. So, so I was done for UTMV, yeah, right. It's called the yellow petal at them, yeah, right. So, I was criminalized. Now, what people don't know, yeah, is we were first generation. Now, what's first generation? First generation British-born blacks. Yeah, our parents came here after the war. Yeah, the Windrush generation. Yeah, to help rebuild Britain. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, children of my age, we were the first ones, yeah, right, to go out into the wider community. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you know how the Ru the Romanians are treated now, that's how we were treated back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. We had to walk and go around in packs, you right? Because Toxted was surrounded by it was it was it was the time of the skinheads, and Toxted was surrounded by Park Lane boot boys, Park Road boot boys, Lodge Lane boot boys, Air Road boot boys, yeah yeah, Flemings, Ben Sherman shirts, braces, and airwear boots, and the sport was catching black kids and giving them a good kicking. Yeah, now, now, our parents were part of the Commonwealth and thought, it's the motherland. Yeah, we went to school with them. We knew what it was about. Yeah, and this is when the violence really started. Yeah, because you've got to remember with a, with a community under attack. There's also a government policy of the criminalization of the black youths. Fast forward a little bit to 1980, yeah? A little 10 years later, you know, right? I'm just going to school, finishing school, left school. I've started martial arts. Who was your school then? Um, I went to, I went to, I'm, I'm a Roman Catholic, yeah. I went to St. Patrick's. Were you in trouble in school? Uh, got expelled. Got expelled from school. Yeah, yeah. Um, fought with teachers. Yeah, set the school on fire. Yeah. Um, Problem child. You just rebellious then because pro, pro, of the abuse pro, pro, and pro, pro, the racism. Child. Problem child. No, see, see. Here's the thing. Yeah, I didn't understand what racism was. Yeah, right. I didn't understand what racism was. Yeah, right. But I, but I'd beaten a man as a six-year-old child. I'd beaten a man. Yeah, yeah, right. right. So I just picked something up and whack you. I didn't, I didn't care who you was or what you was doing. I picked something up and I'd whack you with it. Yeah. Um, and, and it was effective, James. You understand? I got left alone. Yeah. By the time I was in the third year of the school, yeah, yeah, it's got 40 and 50. I was the cock of the school. Yeah, right, because I had an, an aptitude for, fi for physicality. Yeah, right. This was before I started martial arts. Were you big then? Were you tall and strong? No, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was six foot one. Size eleven shoes and twelve and twelve stone at eleven, yeah, with this with the start of a beard, yeah, yeah. I was a man child, yeah. I was rake thin, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I put weight on later. I was rake, I was rake thin, but I was very quick, yeah. I had a very aggressive streak, yeah, yeah, right. And and it was it was. The start, you've got to take it on the geopolitical platform of, of what was happening in America. Yeah, right? It's, Mal it's, it's, it's Malcolm X has just died. Yeah, it's Black is Beautiful. It's Black Power. It's Angela Davis. It's the Soul Dad Brothers. Yeah, right? It's Weird and Black Gloves. It's Tommy, it's Tommy Smith at the, at, at the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're doing that. Yeah, right? So, so. 
black people are starting to find the, the feet. Now, I've had a lot of black Africans and white Europeans tell me I'm not black. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Because the term for us then was half chat, half breed or half caste. Yeah, I ain't half of anything. Yeah, yeah, right. And it used to say, it used to, to circumvent me. So, as a mature man, I ask this question. Why is it that a man can legally change his gender, identify as a woman, it's accepted, they'll even give him an award on TV, yeah? But if I as brown identify as black, it's not so accepted. Maybe it's because Bruce Jenner became Caitlyn Jenner, was a white man became a white woman. Yeah, and society understands gender better than they do race. That's just my own personal take Why on it. Why do you think that is? It, 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 um, I believe that race is a social construct. Yeah, I believe, because if you see children play, they don't, they don't know anything. I believe race and racism is socially constructed. Yeah, right? It goes back and, and, and see, see. I, I want to move forward. Yeah, yeah. Because they say, stop harping on about the history. Stop harping on about the past. Move forward. Yeah. But what you've got to remember, moving forward isn't a one-way street. It's a dual carriageway. So everybody's got to move forward. If you want us to stop talking about what happened in the past, stop celebrating your your history mm -hmm. in our faces. Yeah. yeah, right? Because it makes it impossible to move on. I don't even think it's in the past anymore, Stephen, because the whole world's in protest just now with things that are going on. So do you think much has changed from when you were getting... Listen. Uh, from listen, the 70s and 80s let, to let, now? Let, let me explain it to you. I loved it in the 70s. Yeah. Do you know why I loved it in the seventies? Why? Because the racism was over it. Yeah. It used to stamp around like a monster. Yeah. You could see it. They come up and tell you, you black twat, you black cunt. You knew where you stood. But now the racism, it hides in the reeds and bushes of political correctness. Yeah. It's gone covert and underground. The real sneaky about it. Yeah. I'll, if, if we're allowed, yeah, I'll play you some, my, my phone number was put online, and if it doesn't jeopardise what we're doing, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll play you seven, eight, nine, ten racist messages that I received when my phone number was put on. When was this? Um, summer, August 2017, my phone was put online. Yeah, right. But, but let, let's, let's, let's stay chronological, yeah, right, because... I've got a lot, that, a lot of stuff that I want to clear up, mm -hmm. yeah? Now, and just, just, just to clarify on, on, on the race stuff, yeah? When I was a young man, I hated white people with a passion. I had a white mother, yeah, 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 right? But it was just the way it was. Blacks were with blacks, whites were with whites, and we fought, yeah? As a mature man, yeah, yeah, I've let go of all that hatred, yeah? I've rejected hate, darkness, and despair for the philosophy of love, light, and hope, yeah? That's what I sign my post with, yeah, right? That's my own personal philosophy because I haven't got a racist bone in my body anymore. Because I can point out racism doesn't make me a racist, you right? Now, I've always known that the racism isn't my problem, which, which, which brings me back to the point that I was making to you, which was when I'm 20 in Liverpool, the chief constable is a guy called Ken Oxford. Now, Ken Oxford goes in the BBC Listener magazine and he says, individuals like me are the result between liaisons with white prostitutes, yeah, and black African seamen, 
And when my mum and dad were married, yeah, right, that was the trigger, yeah, that tipped the scales with the start of the, of the and, and it wasn't a riot in Toxted. Toxted wasn't even Toxted then, it was the salt end. We were the salt end shines, yeah, right? It became Toxted after the riots. Now, what's going on in the area? You've got the criminalization of a whole class of pe people, yeah? The sus laws, yeah, yeah, stop. The fit-ups were, were off the chart. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So it was a criminalization of the first generation British born blacks. Yeah, right, right. I don't do it. I don't say this for sympathy. I don't say this for the, I say it matter of factly. That's what went on. Yeah, because see me, racism's never been a problem for me. Racism's always been the racist problem. Yeah, okay. The first time I left school, yeah, I was in all the teams, athletic. I was in football team, cricket team, swimming team. I was in all the sorry, I wasn't in the swimming team. I was in all, all all the teams, yeah. And 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 we would go and play and speak, yeah. So going from where, where our school was in the South End to going to speak, it's like it's like it's like going into Shoshone country. It's like going into bandit country if you're black, yeah. And loads of, me and Mark Buckley, loads of times, yeah, yeah, we got chased from Tingos. Then Paddington Comp was the Protestant black school. And we had an interfaith competition with them. And and cause cause all the white kids were going to play at Paddington, they laid on a minibus. Yeah. So when they laid on the minibus, yeah, I ripped up my jersey and beat up the PE teacher. Yeah, yeah, because I'd been getting chased for weeks and weeks. I got expelled for that. Pat Sherry, the teacher's name was. Yeah, now, now these little incidences, these little infractions, yeah, 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 are starting to build the violence inside me. It's starting to build me wanting to use violence to sort out my problems. Yeah, yeah, right? Because it was because it worked for me. Now, I had a friend who was murdered in 1990 when I was in prison. His name was Andrew John. Yeah, yeah, right. He was big like me, yeah, tall, fast. We were in martial arts together and we were blood brothers. Yeah, and we used to egg each other on something terrible. And we were on Selborne Street, sorry, Mulgrave Street, outside the Caribbean Centre. Leroy Cooper was there, Ivan Freeman was there, yeah, and, and they arrested Leroy on his bike f for nothing. Yeah, and that was the spark. Now, me and Andrew used to give each other a look. Yeah, and he gave me the look, and I gave him the look, yeah, and we attacked two coppers. That was the start of the Toxtiff riot. And the only person that really knows that is Leroy Cooper. He was in the van, and Ivan Freeman and me. Yeah, yeah. And it went like it just went like wildfire from there. And the riots, was that when 500 people were injured, 500 police were injured? Listen. All the buildings burnt. Listen, yeah, yeah, right. So, I'm 21 years of age, yeah. And, and, <sighs> why I'm back, why I'm back to, to, to 1966, yeah? And it's the World Cup. And Pele is playing at Goodison. Yeah, he's playing, he's playing for Brazil. Yeah, at Goodison. And my Uncle Jimmy is taking me to these flats, yeah, right, to buy tickets off this geezer to go and watch the match.
and I'm looking up at the house. I can see it now, and there's a sign, and the sign says, no blacks, sorry, no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. I'm a half white, half black Irish kid with a dog called Patch. Funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but that was my, re that was my, my uh, uh, reality. And my Uncle Jimmy knocked the geezer out. We didn't go and see the match. He knocked the geezer out because he said he wasn't, selling it. he wasn't selling the tickets to black kids. On the corner, there's the Rialto. Yeah. On the, in the Rialto, they have a dance, they had a colour bar. Yeah, yeah. Now, the Conservative Party, the poster, if you want to for the neighbour, vote Labour. Have you ever read that poster? No. I seen them. I seen them in my lifetime. So I won't have nothing to do with Conservatives. If you want for the neighbour, vote Labour. Yeah. Posters in the black community. This is the kind of uh, stuff that we were we were under. Now But the scary thing, this this is this wasn't so long ago. Listen, listen, it's my lifetime. Mm -hmm. You understand? What I'm telling you is is it's it, it, look, look, I'm 60 years of age now. Yeah, yeah, right. So to some people, it's a long time ago. To me, it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now, and, 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 the racism is still. Do you think all those chain of events, seeing all that, seeing the like, mental torture and it's, it's a sense of bullying and everything that comes with it. Is that where you got your rage and your anger? Listen, it's, it's like this, yeah. So, I'm the youngest of five, yeah? Two brothers, two sisters. And any, anybody who's got two brothers and two sisters and the youngest, they'll tell you, you get done in off your brothers and sisters. You get, you get me? You used to just get done in off your, your sisters. I used to get done in terrible off my sister. Yeah, right? So I became impervious to get to, to licks. You get me? I, I, began, I became to be able to think when I was getting hit. You understand, most people, when they get hit, they're not hit, they're shocked. Because they're not used to it. This is what martial arts, this is why martial arts is hit each other. This is why you spar to get used to getting hit. So you can still function and think when you've took a shot. Yeah. So, so, the militancy came from the oppression. Yeah, and the oppression came came mainly from the police. Yeah, and then as all young men, yeah, yeah, your balls drop. Yeah, and you're full of testosterone, and you want to hit back. It's 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 natural. If you look in wildlife, when the young stags become teenagers. They just start running at each other and butting each other. It's a natural progression of stuff. So that's what happened. So, so with me, yeah, the, the, the anger was latent. The, the violence was building up in me, yeah, with, with, with what was happening in the south end with what was going on. It wasn't like it was. It was. It was unique to me. It was. It was for all of us. You understand? What is? Did you start kickboxing? Excellent question. Because this is what I was going to come to. Enter, enter Bruce Lee. Yeah. Enter the Dragon. Yeah. 1973, and the Kung Fu craze kicks off. And I had a couple of friends. Lee Daly was my friend. Calvin Elaine was my friend. Yeah, right. And they was going to a karate club uh, in Lodge Lane. Yeah. So I tagged along. Yeah. And I meet Ronnie. Yeah. And Ronnie says to me, and I'm still at school. Ronnie Cole was my instructor. He's passed away now. Is that your sensei? Yeah, he's my instructor. He was mega, though. He yeah, trained yeah, world he, champions. Listen, everywhere. listen, listen, listen. Found and father of British, Terry O'Neill, Andy Sherry, Bob Poynton, Ronnie Colwell, yeah, 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 yeah. They're the guys that brought karate to this country. You understand? Yeah, yeah, right now. Um, 
You called him your father at one point. I, I get to that. I get that because this, 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 this is, this is, this is our introduction to each other. Calvin and Lee have taken me up to the, the karate club, and and I've seen Bruce Lee films, and I'm, I'm watching. Yeah, and he says he comes out. He says to me, "Do you want to train?" Yeah. Now I won't take anything off nobody. You understand? And I said, "I can't train because I've got no money." Yeah, yeah. He says, "You can train for nothing." Why do you want to give me something for nothing? Anyway, he started to let me train. Did you get suspicious of somebody trying yes, to I help did. you? Yes, yes, very. From the care homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, 40 was a nonce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanting to help me. Yeah, yeah. So, he takes me to one side after about six months. Yeah, and he says to me, you've got something inside you, young man. He said, and I'm going to do two things for you. I'm going to bring it out of you and make you, or I'm going to try and bring it out of you, and it's going to break you. Now, I was forged in the fire of his iron will. He had an Iron will. He taught me about will. He taught me about willpower. Yeah. And about mindset and about not giving up. You understand? But he was the first person outside of family to ever really take an interest in me. Yeah, yeah. 30 years later, I call him my white father. Yeah, I've got a black dad and I've got a white pops. I christened them pops. Yeah, he's five foot ten, maybe, he's five foot ten, maybe 11 stone. The most deadliest man I've ever met. Yeah, he trained the ACS and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He? Most deadliest man I've ever met. Yeah, yeah. And he was training killers. He was teaching us all this stuff. Yeah. And then me and Andrew... Where, where, uh, uh, this is where the th this is where the taxing comes from. This is where the taxing comes from. Do you remember the the urinals, out public urinals, and you go down the stairs? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, they had those urinals on Princess Avenue by Princess Park. Yeah, and it's where the f used to go. Yeah, it's where the, sorry, it's where the gay people used to go. Yeah, it's where the gay people used to go to congregate. Yeah, but this is like mid seventies. Homosexuality is illegal. You understand? They can't go to the police. They can't do anything. So it was the perfect crime. Me and Andrew we used to beat them up and take the watches, and 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 that was the start of our street robbery, and that was the start of 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 the taxing. Taking stuff from people that couldn't report it to the police. This was this was uh, 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 the 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 kernel, the, the the seed, the catalyst. Yeah, yeah. That 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 grew down. Yeah, the police used to come to the to, 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 and then it made the paper that 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 the people were being robbed. Yeah, and people were coming up to them and kicking them in the head, just just standing there. So eventually, um, um, the police turned up at the, at the dojo. Dojo was the training hall. Yeah, they turned up at the dojo. And he says, he says, we believe it's your lads doing this. Ronnie, who's staunch as ever, says, my lads would never, ever do that. Yeah. So now, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's starting to give me an area of my life that I've remained true to. Yeah, 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 right. Because I've got martial arts brothers, yeah, yeah, Kazuna brothers all over the world. I've got them in America, I've got them in Ireland, I've got them in Sweden, yeah, right. I'm known all over the world for my martial arts, yeah, because I was really good, yeah, I was really good in the competitions and uh, and uh, and martial artists. Don't really have racism. The true martial artists, yeah, they see past all that. 
You understand? Mm. Yeah. And there's a camaraderie that's mm. unbelievable. There's a brotherhood. Yeah. See, Kazuna means bond. Yeah. It's more than a brotherhood. You understand? And this is what he instilled in us. Yeah. He's a white guy in Toxteth teaching black kids martial arts. Fantastic. See, when you channeled all that, Stephen, were you not trying to get taught to not have violence outside with martial arts? Everything should be kept in where you see, train see, or fight. See, but see. do you think you, you, because of the, 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 the hell you suffered younger that you channeled both lanes with outside and inside? I'll, I'll answer that this way, James. There's three people. There's three types of people that go to martial arts. Yeah. There's the, the dweeb who thinks it's going to give him something to help himself and, 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 and get him somewhere he, where he's got. He can become a gym tiger, but he just hasn't got that courage to fight. Yeah. There's the guy that likes it for the aesthetics. Yeah. And the sport and the camaraderie of it. Yeah. And then there's the guy that wants to know how to crunch and break people up. Yeah. I was that guy. You understand? Yeah. And, and he used to give me special lessons. Yeah, yeah. With regards to, to, to <laughs> street karate and, and what, what, what techniques, not, not sport, what techniques, yeah, to mess people up. I'll give you an example. Yeah. My, my, my son's mother is, is a little girl called Maria. She had a boyfriend called Glenn. Glenn Cornwall used to terrorise the South End. Yeah. Now, Tony, my elder brother, yeah, right, right. We called him the Gorgon because you could fight like, he could fight like he had snakes in his head. Yeah. Glenn stabbed Tony and beat Tony when I was 11. We were all terrified of Glenn. They went away. Him and Tony Showers went away for, for killing somebody. And I ended up getting with her. Yeah. And he came out. And when he came out, he put it on me. Yeah, he, he came and see me, 20. He, he, and he was a man and he put it on me. Yeah, right. And I bitched out. Yeah, I bitched out. I went home. Yeah, turned all the lights off. And I'm thinking, I'm a punk, I'm a, I'm a punk, I'm a coward, I'm a punk, I'm a punk. Yeah. So I go and see Ronnie. And I say, Ronnie, he's a madman. What do you do when you fight with a madman that's just going to keep coming? What do you think you do with a madman that just keeps coming? Take him out. It, you, you take away his ability to keep coming. You understand? And you don't have to kill him to do that. You, get me? you can put his legs up on the cave and break his legs. You can break his arms. You can break his fingers. Yeah, you can lay him in traction. Yeah. I went and found him in the nightclub. Yeah, jumped on the coffee uh, on, on the table, run along the table, volleyed him straight in the face, took him outside and broke every bone in his body. Yeah. That was the start of my reputation because he had the place terrorised and I beat him when I was 20. Yeah, yeah, right. He did frighten me. He did frighten me. Yeah, yeah right. But when I faced that demon, when I faced that fear, and I conquered that fear, something clicked inside me. Yeah. I went from a boy to a man. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A man with confidence in his own abilities. Yeah. And, 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 the fearless, the fearless nature, the fearless streak of my nature began to develop. Yeah, yeah, it began to develop. Yeah, and and it's 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 it lends itself. The martial arts lends itself to it. It gives you the confidence. It gives you the ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the success of that. Yeah. Then there was the riots. Yeah, what happened with, with, with the police now? now here's, here's, here's the interesting part about the riots. Yeah, there's a main thoroughfare called Parliament Street. Yeah, and if you go up, if you go down Parliament Street, 
to Windsor Street. If you turn left, yeah, you go to the police station, yeah, and 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 Admiral Street Police Station. If you turn right, you go into the city centre. Yeah. All the lads that were getting involved in it, we went to the police station and wrecked the police station. The white lads had the head screwed off and went to the way and got all the stuff. Yeah. But we'd started the riot. When me and Andrew found out that these lad all, had, lads had all the, the washing machines, the fridges and all, all that stuff, we went and took them off them. You understand? This was the start of the taxing, taking things off people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, people, people that, that, that have a go at me for taxing people and robbing people, this is what I tell them, James. I modelled myself on the British Empire. Taking things from people that wasn't strong enough to hold on to them and keeping them for myself. Yeah, I was like Sir Walter Raleigh, but I didn't have a cape. Yeah, so I used to, ju I could justify anything that I did. Yeah, I could justify any, any behaviours that I had. Yeah, right, by an intellectual argument. Yeah, in hindsight, yeah, I just wanted the money. You understand? The highlight of the, of, of the riots, yeah, is is we forced them down. The Charles Walton Centre is at the top. Yeah, Windsor Street's at the bottom. It's about half a mile, and we forced them back. Yeah, they called in for reinforcements from St Helens, from Wigan. Yeah. And, and they weren't ready for the ferocity of it because it was an eruption. You understand? It was an eruption and we set, we set the city on fire. Yeah. And, and, and when you see those that have oppressed you for so long taking flight and running, it's better than sex. Yeah. I related it to, to, and they, 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 they printed this in the echo of something, something, yeah. The Zulus at walk at, at Rock's Drift. Yeah, we was wa walking around with, 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 with sergeants' jackets on. Yeah, and policemen's helmets on. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right? Because we were liberated. We actually liberated ourselves. Did that feel like a victory for you? Massive. You, you, listen, it's 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 hard for me to describe. You're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like if you watch a battle, yeah. If you watch Braveheart, yeah, and you see them in the heat, in the heat of the battle, and then the other side realizes it's on top and they turn and run, and they all get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look at ya. It's that. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it it it's it it's it, 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 it cause it was a pitch battle, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember the kid Daryl Jenkins with a shovel, splitting people with the shovel. Yeah, so... And this was the coppers he was saying? Li listen, listen. How one person died, yeah, it was a lad called Davey Moore, yeah, right? Because what happened was, how they, how they dis disrupted the riots and how they finally, f finally finished it was... CS gas was used for the very first time on the British mainland. It only been used in Northern Ireland. And to stop us what we were doing, they had to use CS gas. I had a mate called Phil Robbo, he got shot in the chest with it. On the calluses it says, do not fire at people. And they were shooting them at us, you understand? And it was the gas, it was the gas that, that, that finished the riot, riots off, yeah. The judges' racket club got wrecked. All the art got took out a day. There was millions and millions of pounds worth of damages. But what happened was then Liverpool it became a no-go area. Yeah, the police couldn't come. The, the police were reluctant to come into, into Liverpool eight. Yeah, 81, 82. Now, do you know the history of 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 the drugs in Liverpool. Yeah. Do you know it started off with African semen and weed? 
No. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the actual history, the, 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 the geopolitical of history of drugs. Yeah. African seamen used to just bring ganja. Yeah, used to come on the African boats. And was it harsh at that time uh, or was it weed? No, no, it was bushweed. Was it? Yeah, bush, bush, it was bushweed. Yeah. His, his, his interesting sidebar, yeah. There was a barber called Lord Woodbine. Yeah, Lord Woodbine. If you go and see the Beatle statue, yeah, and you look under the shoe of the Beatle statue of John Lennon, it's got an eight for L8. Yeah, because I know where he used to go to buy his weed. He used to go to to to, to uh, uh, Lord Woodbine's barber shop to buy his weed. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And he used to come. That's and 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 the Beatles' music was influenced by black culture. Yeah, yeah right. Just like Elvis Presley, exactly the same as Elvis Presley. Yeah, right. But they crossed over. And and and. I don't say that with any jealousy or any, it's, it's, it's not right. That's just the way it was, man. You understand? That the, the Beatles did what they did. Yeah, so it started off with weed. Then the Dockers, Tucker Comerford and, 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 and such, yeah, realised that the docks were just open. Yeah, and then we had, um, it, it, was, it was heroin at first. You understand? It was it was Turkish heroin, yeah, 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 and and the Dockers were doing it, and they made millions. This is before anybody knew what was going on. Yeah, mid eighties, moving on. Yeah, then Charlie comes in. Yeah, so now you've got weed, you've got brown, you've got white, yeah, and you've got a no go area. You've got it somewhere where, where the police don't want to go. So that becomes becomes the distribution centre. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah right? And, and everybody starts to grow like redwoods. But you've got to know who's who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the white guys, yeah, was keeping everything to themselves. Yeah, right? So it happened this way. Um, um, there was there was there was a colour bar in the city. So I had I I I started a security firm, Scorpio Security Services. And and there was a colour bar. They never used to let black lads into the clubs. So me and Andrew and a few other lads, we went we went and took over the doors, yeah, and started letting black lads in the clubs. And I'm, I've got a security firm now. And a lad comes to me and he says to me, I've been robbed, Steve. Yeah, and if you, get, if, you get, if you get it back for me, yeah, I'll give you X amount of money. Of cocaine, a kilo of cocaine. Yeah, so he wants to give me 10 grand. I know Curtis, I phone Curtis, and Curtis tells me, that's where it fit 30, 30, 40,000 pounds. That's cut this one. Yeah, that's where 30, 40,000 30, 40, pounds. Stephen, yeah. So then that kid had a partner. Yeah. I don't want to dwell on the drug stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 r right. But the problems came when the crack came. You understand? Is that in the 80s? Late 80s going on. Yeah, late 80s go going on. Yeah, right, when Curtis was doing what he was doing. Yeah, you're right. And then it, 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 the, the city's just a, a, a wash with it. Yeah, right. And you see, see, weed, everybody's mellow. Brown, everybody's on doubt. Yeah. Charlie, everybody's like that. You understand? So th that, that had its, it, it, its effect. See, when you were doing the kickboxing, Stephen, you became British champion, European champion, world champion. And did English. You en did you enjoy just beating people up? Did you en was it fun uh, for uh, you? Uh, did uh, you get a sense of a good feeling, a buzz? See, see, here's the thing, you're right. I learned 
to compartmentalise, to, 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 to put things into different boxes. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm a security boss. I'm at university. I'm a karate champion, yeah, right? Because I'm pulled every which way. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm Malcolm X or Martin Luther King. Yeah, or, or Billy the Kid. You understand? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in everything. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I went to to Liverpool University. Yeah. What were you studying? I studied sociology and psychology. Got a two one. Was that to try and battle your demons from the past? No, understand you see, them. You see, you see. Inside me, James. Yeah, right. There's a dichotomy of light and dark. Yeah, and it's all about choices. Yeah, because I was fortunate enough to go to university. Yeah, and I could have gone down that road. Yeah, of, of getting a steady job and doing what I was doing. Yeah, but I was juggling too many balls. Yeah, yeah, right. And then the law of the easy money, being young and being greedy, yeah, 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 I went down a criminal path. Yeah, because... Um, Did you get a buzz from it? Because if you were doing uni, world champion listen, kickboxer... Listen, 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 at that time, yeah, nobody really knew what was going on. You understand? Yeah, 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 right. I was undercover. Yeah, nobody because you. you but I, I realized early on. Yeah, if you're gonna sell drugs or you're gonna be involved in the drug world, yeah, 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 you gotta have something else. Yeah, yeah, right. That says that's where your money's coming from. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because so many, so many lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I drive around in 30, 30 grand cars and signing on. Yeah, you're not gonna get anywhere with that. This is this is why, this is why I never went to prison. You understand? This is why I never went to prison till I was in my in my fifties. And the reason why I went to, to, to uh, prison in my fifties is I got hooked on cocaine and it, it, it addled my brain. You understand? I stopped thinking smart. Yeah, right. Because be taking drugs in your twenties, thirties, or forties. Listen, listen. I've always smoked weed. Yeah, I smoke weed. I, did, I, I never used to drink, but I'd have a reefer, no tobacco, just pure green, just 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 weed. Yeah, and 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 I learned that from Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee used to just smoke marijuana. Did he? Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah, listen, listen, listen. There's nothing wrong with green, mate. Yeah, I smoked it for twelve years. Yeah, I? yeah. Not now. I have a spliff occasionally. Yeah, yeah, right. I have a drink, but I'm um <sighs> December December. This year, I'm five years cocaine free. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. It cost me everything, that drug. I understand, turn me into a fucking, turn me into. The devil? A mess. No, 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 no. The, the devil come before the coke. Mm. You understand? Yeah, yeah, right. The devil, the devil got the money. The devil got the money. Yeah. The devil got the power. Yeah, get the money, get the power, then you get the girls. You understand? Yeah, you're right. And it, it's a recipe. You're right. And then it's it's like it's like it's very it's very. Um, I don't really like talking about it. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, right. But I've agreed to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it's part of it's part of who it was. You're right, right. But when I look back on it, and when I look at it, yeah, right, I feel ashamed. Yeah. And I feel I feel ashamed, yeah, right, because of the devastation that I help create. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, one of the reasons why I became an anti-gun campaigner, yeah, 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 right, until a pistol whip something became a hypocrite. I'll talk about that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was okay. You, you, you. you you, you haven't met me, yeah. You haven't met me, but when you meet me, and you think, "Fucking, at least bigger than 
what everybody says it. So you know on telly, and then when you turn up, you're huge. Yeah, yeah, right. So your man there's your man there's got a kilo of coke under the bed. He's twelve stone. I'm I'm what I am. How's he gonna stop me? How's he gonna stop me? He has to get himself an equalizer. You understand? So along with the crack, along with the robbing of the drug dealers, came the firearms. And 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 I I take I I hold my hand up to my part in that. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Because because people are being to they they have a draw with a little bit of money in that if I turned up they could give me that. But they'd have the proper money stole because I was I was that pr prolific at, at, at what I was doing, yeah. So. Uh, uh, um, and then, how many times were you doing it per week, Stephen? How many taxes were you listen, doing? Listen, it doesn't work like that, James. You get mm. me? What 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 happens is is you and him you and him have got a graft, yeah, and you might be doing whatever you are doing, and there's a falling out, yeah, and you have him over, yeah, and he's not happy. But well, you're you're too much shit him. So you know that saying, uh, information is more valuable than gold. They come to me with the information. This is what he's done to me. This is there that comes then. This is what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you might have a job once in three months. He might have three jobs in a week, yeah. But it's always big money. You what's, what's the most you took out one job? Most, most of the big, most of the big money. Um, I'd rather not say, James. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather not say. Yeah, and the reason why I, I don't want to say, I've, I've had a lot of problems with the tax man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny that, isn't it? They called you the tax man, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's what that's that's what it became. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but CC. It's as old as the hills. Mm -hmm. I didn't invent it. What did you do when you went into people's houses? What was the plan? Did you go through their door? Did you chap their door? Listen, see. And I explain this to Danny, and I'll explain it to you. Yeah. I seen the video with proper shit yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. The last thing I want to do is leave physical marks on you. It's the last thing I want to do. Because if I leave physical marks on you, You've got something to show the police. You can concoct some story. You came to buy a car. You can concoct some story. And because it's me, the police will believe it. You understand? So, my bag, yeah, right, was psychological terror. You understand? Yeah, right. And it all comes from the psychology. It's like, it's like when I whispered to Danny. You understand? Yeah, right. And you see what happened to him. Yeah. yeah, right. Now, it's like, it's like, okay, James, you can keep that bottle of water or you can give it to me. Yeah. Now, whatever way this is going, I'm having that water. Yeah. Now, you can handle over freely. Yeah, yeah, right. Or I can make your life really, really uncomfortable. Yeah, I can do things to you that you'll never forget. Yeah, and I'm cold, and I'm calculated, and I'll have no fucking problem doing to do doing to you. You understand? Yeah, and it, it's it's it's. Did that work a hundred percent of the time, or did people say? Do you ever get people standing up going fuck off? Um. <sighs> Violence was used, yeah, yeah. See, 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 you can't, you, you, you can't make a threat and then not carry it out. If it comes to that, you understand. If it comes to that, now, here's the thing. I give, I give it an example of it. I give it an example of it. You know, Pierce Morgan's, yeah, yeah, yeah right. You know, he, he lost his job in the Daily Mirror. Yeah, yeah, right. Is he tapping phones or something? No, no, no. The, 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 
fake photographs from yeah, the, yeah, from yeah. the yeah, right, yeah. Right. right. Well, he was working with Graham Johnson at that time. And they brought the photographs to me. Yeah, yeah, right. And he said, what do you think of these photographs? I said, they're fake. He goes, how do you know the fake? Because there's no fear in them. You understand? There's no sweat. Yeah, 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 right. When people are frightened, they secrete all kind of stuff. You understand? And, and, and the photographs were too sanitised. And I warned them, and they, and they, and they run them. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's... It's difficult for me to talk about because it's so unpleasant. Mm -hmm. You understand? To bring back a lot of emotion. It, How no, it's not, 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 it's, it's not, no, James, it's not emotion, it's shame. Yeah. It, 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 it's shame, yeah, and embarrassment, yeah, of how barbaric I was. Yeah. Because anyone who does gear... Uh, a majority of people are cardboard gangsters anyway, but there's yeah. always one or two who goes, fuck him, I'm going to get my revenge because you've had six or seven attempts on your life. Yeah. Was that because of your, listen, what listen, you've done? Listen. There's a reason why lions in the jungle don't eat to the lions. You understand? There's a reason why lions eat the sick gazelle hanging out. You understand? And get on that. Because the the possibility of of repercussions are limited. Now now I applied my intelligence to everything. Yeah. And and it sounds like I'm a bully. Yeah. But at the heart at the centre of every bully is a coward. Yeah, 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 right. I know that I'm not a coward. You understand? I, 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 I know, yeah, right, what I'm capable of, the situations I've been in and how I've got out of them. So I know that I'm not a coward. Yeah, right. But I'm very calculating. Yeah, and I was very calculated with it. Yeah, right, with what, with what, I, with what I did. Yeah, right. Then also, hmm, my psychiatrist has told me I had a death wish. Yeah, yeah, right. That I didn't care if I didn't care if it didn't la I didn't care if I lived or died because of the risks I took and because of the things that I was doing. Yeah, right. It was wanting abandonment for my own life. Yeah. That that and, and this is the fantastic part. Yeah, yeah right. That all relates to the tra childhood trauma. It's, it's all manifested. Yeah, it's all manifested. Yeah, now it might be clouded, yeah, yeah, right, or it might be hidden by by what's a cash like this. Yeah, what's a cash like this? But it's all based in self-loathing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Your pain was still there. Yeah. It doesn't matter see, how much money you made or whatever. See, listen, 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 listen. Mm -hmm. I had more money than. It, it was incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I could buy hundred grand Bentley. I could go and buy hundred grand Bentley cash and not be broke. Yeah. So, so the cash was unbelievable. Yeah. And with that comes an, an attitude. Yeah, yeah, right. But I wasn't happy, man. I was empty. You understand? Yeah. Soulless. Yeah. A dry land shark. Yeah, I've got nowhere near what I had. Yeah, yeah right. But I'm more content now. Mm -hmm. I like myself more now. Yeah. All the external stuff you thought, listen, bigger listen, house, bigger car, more listen, money listen, to try and listen, fulfill a void. Listen, here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Billionaires commit suicide. Yeah, a million percent, yeah. Billionaires commit suicide. So money makes things easier. I'm not going to say... Money doesn't make things easier. That's a ridiculous statement to make. Yeah, right. But it can't buy you true happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. Yeah, yeah. You know the the happiest thing I ever did. What's that? Give me the most joy. When I let my daughter go in the swimming pool 
and she could finally swim. Yeah, cost of the entrance into the swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. Now, now that's retrospectively. Yeah, looking back with the older head. You understand? Yeah, in the dynamics of the moment, which brings me back to the point that I want to make, and you maybe you can edit this into it. Yeah, right. Inside me, there's a dichotomy. Yeah, yeah, right. Of light and dark, right and wrong. Yeah, because my mum went to work. She told us about what was right and what was wrong. She made some of her own wrong choices. Yeah, that I'll discuss when she dies. Yeah, right. But as a single mother with five kids, all different colours of the rainbow, she kept us together. You understand? And and I knew the difference between right and wrong. Yeah, this is why I talk about change powered by choice. Yeah, because I made uh, look look. I made some bad choices, yeah. The, the, the had, and, and and the the financial reward papered over the cracks of the bad choices. Do you understand what I mean by that? Million percent. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. And and what you've got to remember is everything I'm dis I'm discussing with you now is retrospectively. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right. At that time, I didn't think like that. Mm -hmm. At that at that time, I was I was angry, wicked, and I'd say evil. Or the evil person. How did you get the name the devil? How did that come about? See, see. This is a story that that that's quite interesting, and it's quite remarkable too, because a lot of people think I hate white people. Yeah, they think I'm a racist and a can't stand white people, and I only used to I only used to rob white people. It just happened that the white people had all the drugs. Yeah. So anyway. I've got a sister called Carol. She's passed away now. Yeah. And she 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 was married to a white guy, yeah, yeah, from the north end of Liverpool, Scotty Road, called Tosh. Yeah, now he Tosh bought Carol at um at um hairdressers and he was renovating it, late eighties, he was renovating it, right in the heart of Toxid, High Park Street, Liverpool Eight, and he's renovating it. And the, the guy who was the devil before me, yeah, it was a Sunday and he was sleeping off a Saturday night. And our Tosh is working away in, in the place, yeah, he's woke up, yeah, he's come out, he's called them all the white seas under the sun, he's racially abused them, yeah, right. Now our Tosh is in a punk, but he's gone home. Our cattle, she never, never called on me and her brothers, but she was so upset she phoned me and told me, yeah, I rounded them up. I had them within the hour, he apologised to her. So emphatic was my victory over this guy, yeah, who was a demon, he was the devil, yeah, that the name passed to me. Yeah, right, from him, it passed to, to, to me. And then, when, 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 uh, uh, and then I became the devil, yeah, right, and then and then I was doing devilish stuff, wicked evil stuff. People were getting bad stuff done to them. Yeah, right. If the psychology didn't work, the violence would work. Yeah. I'm not gonna be graphic about it, yeah, right? But it's documented. Yeah, yeah, right. So I'm trying to move away from it, but it's part of my history. So Graham Johnson comes and finds me for something. I want to write a book. I want to call a book Tall, Dark and Dangerous. It's a play on Tall, Dark and Handsome. Yeah. He does his research and he speaks to a few people and they say to him, he's the devil. That man's a devil. He's always he beat the devil and he became the devil. He comes back to me. He says to me, we need to call the book the devil. I said, I don't want to call it the devil. I said, let's call it, they called him the devil. He said, he said to me, no, 
and he talked me into it and he turned down to his right. He wrote, he wrote 10 books. Yeah, the devil saw more than all of them put together. You understand? I don't know it was the title. Yeah. And I, I explained to it because, because I'm a Christian. Yeah, right? And I explained in the book, I believe in the Trinity, I explained in the book, it's a generic devil. It's not the devil. You understand? Yeah, right? It's not Lucifer. It's not Satan. Yeah. It's a genetic term in terms of like the red devils or he's a wicked devil. Yeah. It was like that. But there was a period in my time, a period in my life where I bought into it. You understand? Yeah. Where I bought into it. And, and, and reveled in it. Yeah. And you may, you may sense me pensive talking about it because I'm embarrassed over it. Mm-hmm. You understand? I'm, 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 I'm embarrassed over it. I've tried to move away from that and I've tried to re- reinvent myself as a fighting preacher. You understand? Yeah, yeah right, right. But people are drawn to that name. Yeah, it's catchy. It's whatever it is. Yeah, right, the negative part of it, it, it the, the, the drawn to it. Yeah, and, and it's affected my children. Your dad's the devil. You understand? Now, when I was the devil, I didn't have kids. Yeah. If you're going to be a G, if you're going to be a gangster, don't have no children. Yeah. My daughter, yeah, yeah. My son's had to live with my shadow. Yeah, you're right. And he, 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 he couldn't, he couldn't have it. Yeah. Um, my daughter, who's probably educated and, and I kept her away from everything. Nobody even knew I had a daughter since she was about 16. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's had a lot of pressure over it. So I'm alienated from my children because of my past. You're right. Now, now, I don't get the flack. Nobody comes up to me and says to me, you're black. You're right. I don't get racially abused on the phone and not to my face. Keyboard warriors. Yeah, not to my face. Yeah, right, right. Because I'm a lion, aren't I? You don't go and pull a lion by the tail. Yeah, so I don't see all that. Yeah, but she's she's she's. It's been difficult for them. You understand? It's been difficult for them, especially with me being so high profile. Yeah, especially with me being it on on the TV and doing what I was doing. Yeah, right. Because the 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 idea. I had, I had, I had a very. I was in a. I was on Paradise Island in the Indian in the Ocean when I had this idea. Yeah, right. About writing a book. Selling it, yeah. Making it, making. I need twenty five million quid to open up the Andrew John Memorial Skill Centre, yeah. A centre that knows no race, no creed, no background, yeah. To teach our young men, yeah, skills, so they can provide for themselves and their families without having to do the things that I did, yeah, right. Because I'm like this. I've never, never in my life, James, said, "Please help me, my poor black boy, and put me hand out." Yeah, I'm from the school of Malcolm, self-help. Yeah, the, all, all this, uh, uh, the crying, the crying, the crying, they want to hand out. I don't want to hand out off nobody. Yeah, we'll do it ourselves. Now, I, 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 it was nefarious the way I made my money. Yeah, yeah right. But if you want to get serious, the whole, the whole, the, the whole, this all here is built on nefarious money. Yeah, everybody, everybody's got a story. Yeah, uh, Joe Kennedy, the Kennedys, bootlegger, yeah, wanted to buy a chain of cinemas. The guy wouldn't sell him the cinemas. He got a girl to accuse him of rape, accused the guy of rape. He went to jail, he bought the cinemas, and the rest is history. The woman confessed on a, on a deathbed. Yeah, right? So, so, people can't point the finger at me. Yeah. yeah? I know too much. You understand? I've I've got the answers for it. Yeah, like when people say to me, robbing and, and, and taking off people. Yeah, I say, tell the queen to give back the corn or the diamond. The Indian people want it back. She's got it in the middle of her crown. They robbed it. She, you want me to give my money back? Tell her to give hers. All the stuff you've been through in your life, and now that you touched on the rape thing, you were charged with rape. Yeah. Let's touch on that because obviously there's a lot of question marks. You got to not guilty, but. What was going through it? What no, was happening no, at that I, I, time? And, and, and I've never actually got a not guilty. Yeah. It got stopped before trial. 
So the case get thrown out? Yeah, it got stopped before trial. It should never have got out to the police station. Yeah. What, what, the, the situation with that, yeah, right, and I have to be very careful, yeah, right, because she who cannot be named, yeah, has anonymity for life. My accuser has anonymity for life. I can't even lay a crumb down that may lead back to here or that I, I, otherwise I'll be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. What I can say, yeah, yeah, right, is I've been with hundreds of women, both black and white, yeah, and she was a white girl. Yeah. Now, the, the establishment loses its mind when they take a dirty <laughs> as raped a white girl. Yeah. We've been getting lynched, banned, yeah, for looking at white girls for hundreds of years. I say that matter-of-factly, yeah? I don't say it to say, eh, 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 eh. I'm getting picked on because I'm black. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, historically, this is the way it's been. Yeah. I got another girl pregnant. Yeah. And she was scheduled to have an abortion. Yeah. I didn't want a baby with this girl. Yeah, right. When I was on Charlie, yeah, I'd stick my dick in a can of worms. Yeah. And and there was no way I wanted to have a baby with this girl. Then my daughter, yeah, fell pregnant. She took me to Manchester for, for my birthday and she told me she was pregnant. And I've always had this dichotomy of right and wrong, I want to be a good guy, I want to be a bad guy. So, my Abby said, I'm having a baby, Dad. So then, James, I had a crisis of conscience. You know, right? I'm, I'm celebrating the birth of a grandchild. And I'm organising a birth of this child. Yeah, 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 an abortion for this other child. So I changed my mind. Yeah, and the girl that accused me of rape, yeah, yeah, didn't want a girl to have a baby to me. Yeah, and I told her that the girl was having an abortion. Yeah, but then I changed my mind and I didn't tell her that I changed my mind. And the reason why I didn't tell her that I changed my mind is I didn't know whether the baby was mine. So what I was going to do is when the baby was born, have a DNA test. If it's my baby, take responsibility for it. If it's not my baby, no harm, no foul. Somebody contacts um, she cannot be named and says the abortion hasn't taken place. She then proceeds to gold, follow me around and gold me for two days, trying to get me to give it a crack. Yeah. At a location that I can't name, all I can say is it wasn't my house. All I can say is we weren't a couple and she didn't live with me. Yeah, right? But at a location, yeah, where we were, yeah, uh, uh, um, and she was trying to get me to discuss what was going on, but I was refusing to talk about it. Yeah, I'm on license for the pistol whipping. Yeah, she spits at me, jumps down the stairs, yeah, and says, I'm getting you sent back to jail. You wait, phone, gets on the phone, phones the police up and says, he just keeps beating me, he just keeps beating me, he just keeps beating me. Yeah. Now, like I said, I'm seven, 17 stone, six foot three, no physical injuries, no injuries whatsoever. And she goes into the police station and she 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 says, he's thrown me down the stairs. I want him recalling to prison. Enter DC4849 Lucy Neal. Yeah. And she says, has he ever sexually assaulted you? 
She says no. She comes out to the police station. She contacts me. I won't speak to her on the phone. I won't speak to her. She contacts me on inbox messenger. Yeah, she says, I'm sorry. I, w I was drunk. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. I I'll, I'll go to the police. I tell them that, that it was a mistake. I said, listen, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've gone the old bill about me. It's done. Never want to see it again in my life. Yeah, if you go the old bill once, you'll go them again. You're not having me over that bottle. She goes back and tells them that I raped her. But the seed was planted in her head by, by, the, by the, the old bill. Yeah, 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 right. I get recalled to prison. I get, sorry, I get, I get questioned on the 20th. Yeah, there's an email that she sent me. On the email it says, Rigorous honesty, please. You told me you took the slut for an abortion. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a race hate crime. Yeah, right. I was saying, I was saying that's the only crime. Yeah, yeah, right. She's calling me. An that's a motive. Yeah, yeah, right. The police officer buries that information for five months, sits on it for five months. The recording, she, 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 there's, there's a voice recording, yeah. A lad that's connected is in the house. When she's on the phone, I said to the lad, if you don't stop her doing what she's doing, I'll take it up with you and all the men in your family. Stop her doing what she's doing, or I don't want to fuck you. He says that's a threat to, they please say that's a threat to kill. But it's all on a, it's all on the tape recording. But the recording goes missing. Because... You'd hear it on recording. That's it. Threats on tape. I've got him. I've got him. Watch what we can do now. Yeah, right. Now, the hidden hand or the rogue elements of Freemason police officers in the Willow Command team finally see a chance to get me good on. And they join league with here. Maisie and Cheshire CPS, Siobhan Blake, is the head of that. Yeah. And on the strength of her word, no physical evidence, no other evidence whatsoever. Four stain, three, nothing yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they say, rape. I get questions. She says she was raped two weeks before Christmas. Two weeks before Christmas, 2.15. She can't remember what day it is. Now, she can't say what day it is. Yeah, right? Because I could be in a different city. I've got a house in Liverpool. I've got a house in London. She don't know where I am. So she says two weeks before Christmas. It turns out that I had sexual contact with her on Friday the 11th of... Friday the 11th of December, we had sexual contact. Yeah, right? So they questioned me over that Friday. Yeah. Now, because... And then... There's, there's stuff that I can't tell you, but because of, 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 of money situations and what you said regarding money, yeah, and what my bank statement shows, a statement is proved to be lying. So there was a charge of controlling behaviour through finances, but they had to drop the charge of controlling behaviour through finances. Now, this is, this is a technical part, yeah. When you, go, when you get charged with something, yeah, it has to go under a, a CPS 4.2, yeah, yeah, a, evidence and likelihood of evidence and likelihood of conviction. Yeah, yeah, right. If, the, if, the, if, the, if there's no likelihood of conviction, there's no charge. Yeah, right. Now, a statement's already proven to, be, to have lies in it. But they're going to rely on air weird on the rape and they're going forward with it. I said to my solicitor, there's no way that I can go to trial in Liverpool on this. He says, you shouldn't even be charged. I said, they're stitching me up. If I go to trial on this, yeah, they're going to put a probation officer on the jury, a police officer on the jury, or they're going to put somebody, they're going to rig the jury on me. Yeah, right, and I'm going to get found guilty. I've got to stop this before trial. I'm arguing with them, and I'm arguing with them, I'm arguing with them. 
Then I get advanced disclosure five months later. I get the email and I get mentions of the tape. Yeah. So I've got a barrister called Dominic Thomas, guy with a one eye patch, fantastic barrister from London. Yeah. I said to him, I want to go for the discontinuance. I want to have an abuse process hearing. Yeah. Right. And I want to get this case kicked out. He says, you've got no chance of that. I said, I know. I just want to get this evidence before the judge because they're keeping it su suppressed. He says, he says, I don't think you should do that. I said, you sacked. And I did it myself. So I had the abusive process hearing. I bring up the email. I say, here's the email. I bring up the stuff about m money's com come out of my account. I said, you're not talking about it. Yeah, you're right. This is what you need to do. You're right, because this case isn't going any f any forward. Judge Dennis Watson QC, he says, yes, Mr. French, the email constitutes constitutes a race hate crime, but you still got to answer the, answer the charges, because he was a specially spe uh, specially selected judge, yeah, 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 to railroad this case. They're my subjective views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what was going on in there. So I'm arguing with this man, right? He doesn't like me and I don't like him. Yeah. But I get the suppressed evidence in court. Now on that day when I had the abuse process hearing, yeah, every other day the papers had been in, the newspaper had been in. On that day, they never let, they never let the newspapers in because they knew it was a bogus case. On the 29th of September, they send a letter to me, solicitor, and they say, we'll throw the rape out if he holds his hands up to the threats to kill. The whole case should go, yeah? The whole case should go, yeah, you're right. Now I've got a decision to make. Do I, do I hold my hands up to threats to kill that I never made? Or do I run a whole trial, yeah? And I speak, I, I, speak, I get all the Paolo Martini, yeah, right? He's a separate solicitor that knows what's going on. Go Stephen, they're out for you. He says, if you want to give you three for threats to kill, I'm telling you, take it. You don't want to get rape on your record. Yeah, he says, he says, the fix is in, yeah, right? He's in, he's in, 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 in the, the fraternity, yeah, right? So, and, and he's my mate. And he's telling me the fix is in, do you want you? Yeah, right, they're gonna do whatever they need to do, yeah, to get you, do, do, do you want something off you? 13th of October, yeah, I asked him, I say to, the, I say to Judge, Judge Dennis Watson, give me a good year indication, what are you gonna give me? Because I'm indicted, I'm indicted for threats to kill. As an indictable offense, I can get, a four, I can get four years for it. Yeah, and I want to know what he wants to give me because I've only got three months left on my license. Yeah, so I want to know what he wants to give me. He says, no, I'm, I'm not giving you a good year indication. So let's go to trial then. Okay, because you're not, you're not slamming me on, on it, I think, yo. And he take me back downstairs in, in, this, in the cells. Then he come back down to me and he said to me, we'll deal with it as a summary matter. Do you know what a summary matter is? Yeah. He says, which is in the magistrates, mm -hmm. the most I can give you is six months. Yeah which means I'll do three. I'm coming out on three anyway. So... Would that run concurrent? Yeah. So I says to them, I says to them, I says to him, I'll plead guilty to this charge only if I can still take this to the Royal Court of Justice for the malicious prosecution. Yeah, on the, on the rape. Yeah, because I want to name it. Yeah, I want to I get, get it out. He says, as long as your case isn't frivolous, yeah, they, did, they, they didn't think I'd, I'd go ahead with it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I've been quiet for three years. I've got the case listed now. Yeah, I've got two cases in the Royal Courts of Justice. I've got the police on one case. I've got the, uh, and, and the prison on one case. And I'm listing this, this one because I'm going to strip it all away. It was bollocks. 
Yeah, yeah, right. Now she she just turned out she who cannot be named was just a con a conduit for Merseyside police to do what they wanted to do. You understand? Roll back, roll back to when I told you about Jimmy Savile. Roll back to when I'm in prison and Eddie Atta has phoned is, is, is Stephen Spencer, Spencer Benjamin up and said they're going to turn him into the next Jimmy Atta. Jimmy Savile, they charged me because they believed everybody would come out the woodwork. You understand? They never come out the woodwork. It was a bogus case. I'm still undoing it all. Yeah, I'm still I'm still in the process of undoing it all. And it will be it will be undone. Yeah. And when I do finish it, I'll come back and do another show with you. How was it for you when you get charged with freight when it came out that you were charged? How was the reaction from people? Um well here's what here's what happened. When they looked at the evidence, I was I was questioned over the eleventh of September. When they looked at the evidence and what she said, that day couldn't work. That day couldn't work. So they changed the date. When they changed the date, they said from the 1st of, of December to the 31st, any time. I wasn't even questioning over those dates. But then because they put two dates, the echo put the echo went in the echo before I went to court. Stephen French charged with two counts of rape. I'm in prison. Yeah, it, they're screaming at me. One, one Frenchie, one rape. Yeah, that's all right. We, we could believe you. But you've raped her twice. Yeah, right. And I hadn't. It was a deliberate mistake in the paper. Do you think they meant that? You tell me. You t Listen, listen, listen. You tell me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. I think I've got it there. You tell me front page. Front page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two counts of rape. Page 20 the next day. Sorry, we made a mistake. It's only one. So you tell me. Yeah. Doesn't matter how game you are or how much you can fight that shit in prison. Listen, you're a listen, what, you're what, a listen duck. no, 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 no. Here, you see, here's what happened. Yeah. Rapists, guilty rapists go on the numbers. I stayed in general population, mate, because I wasn't guilty. Yeah, I wasn't guilty. They had to move me from Walton, yeah, right, right, because it was going off too regular. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Now, you got to see, 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 here's the problem that you've got with me, James. I'm in my 50s. Yeah, I'm in my 50s. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But I can fight like fuck still. You understand? Now, if you listen, if you listen to the punks in them, you say, when Frenchie was in jail, yeah, he locked himself in his cell. Yeah, and he never came out of his cell. Yeah. I did stay in my cell. Yeah, right. But I went to the gym three times a week and I went to church every Sunday. And if anybody wanted to see me, see me in the gym. And if you really want to have with me, come to the church. Because I'll be in church every Sunday. Yeah. Now, I wasn't putting myself in a position where it would be, be, be anywhere. Now, real geezers... Real, real fellas knew what was going down. It's just rats and punks that want to jump on all that. Yeah, right? Because if you, and, and, and at that time, yeah, yeah right, I was, fuck, I was doing social media posts and I was naming police officers that were I was naming judges that was Yeah, right? right? And, and listen, they just recalled me, pulled the wind out, out of my sails, Stuck a rape charge on me. Yeah, yeah, right. And I was fighting for my life, man. Yeah. Um, How was it for you when the case got threw out? Sense of relief? So, so no, no, not really. Because this is, this is what happened, yeah. This is what happened. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Preston. Yeah, yeah. And there's a build-up of about 12 young scouts lads on our, our wing. One's called Roy Hockman. Yeah, absolute tosser. Yeah, so I'm on the wing with these 12 scousers and I can feel it building. Yeah, but they haven't got the balls to do anything. 
You understand? So one of them, one of them says something. Yeah, right. I says, if you want to say anything to me, come to me, pad. So they send this, this, this ginger-headed, light-skinned black kid. Yeah, I christened him the coconut. Yeah. Brown on the outside, white in the, on the inside. Yeah. So he's trying to front it for them. So he gets cracked. Yeah, on, on my pad door. Yeah. Screws come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know it's Roy Hockman doing it all. Yeah, right. But he hasn't got the boss to say anything to me. So we're in the gym. Yeah. We're in the gym. I sit down. I'm, I'm dressed. I sit down in the gym and he's getting dressed. And I'm waiting for the changing rooms to empty. Yeah, because I'm going to fucking smash it. I'm waiting for the changing rooms to empty because I'm going to have a fight with him. Yeah, I'm going to teach him about life. This is the kid that's running the jail. Yeah. What do you think he did, James? He grabbed his shirt, put his pants on, grabbed his shirt, skin tops, everything, towel, soaking wet and ran out. This is what they do when I get them on their own. You understand? I ran, ran out, wouldn't stay in the changing rooms where the screws, screws couldn't see it on and have it with me. Yeah, yeah. So, so, it, 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 it's tense. Now, I know. Did I, you think there was a hit out in, you, in prison? No, no. Let, 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 me, mm -hmm. let me deliver to you. I know, I know. That I, as long as I'm on that wing with them, they're not going to do nothing because I can go into their pads at any time. Yeah. Something happens. So, something happens. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know that if I do anything in jail, I'm getting an outside charge. You can have a fight in jail. Anybody has a fight in jail and they brush it under the carpet. But they're looking, they're looking to keep me in prison any way they can. Yeah. So I've got to not have any trouble with anybody. He threatened my daughter. He threatened my daughter. So I've gone down to save it and I've threw all the food over them. Yeah, I got moved to a, I got moved to another wing. I got moved to another wing. And that's when they paid somebody to attack me. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to, going to college or going, whatever I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can you see that thing on the back of my head? Yeah, Scar. Yeah, yeah. Can I tune it in a sock? Yeah, some, a double lifer, eh? never getting out, whacks me in the back of the head. Yeah, but it doesn't take, it doesn't put me down. I turn round, I take off after them. Yeah, yeah, and he runs behind the screws. Blood's gushing out of my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the screws jump on me. Yeah. They take me down to the segregation unit. Yeah, they cut my clothes off me, yeah, and they choke me out. I get, I get choked out. I wake up, James, yeah, sometime later, lying in a pool of my own blood, freezing cold naked. Do you know what I did? I dipped my hand in, the, in my blood and I wrote on the wall in massive letters, my turn will come. I've got my turn now. I've got them in in, in um, Royal Court of Justice. I've issued the case. Yeah, yeah, right. Wrote into them. Got the CCTV. It's all on CTV. Yeah, they're doing that. Do, do, just, just doing them. The kid, the kid that whacked me on the back of, on the on the whack, back on the back of the head. The next day, yeah, his arm pulled through the railings and someone snapped it off. I haven't got a clue who did that, but that's what happened to him. You understand? Roy, Roy, the boy, Hockman, yeah? Gets all of Sam Walker and says, tell Frenchy, can we squash the beef? Can we squash the beef? I said, I've got no beef with him. He's got no beef with him. I've got no beef with him whatsoever. Yeah, I'm not interested. I've let it go. It's over the stun. Yeah, I'm out of prison. Yeah. I, I went and seen the screws and I said to them, there's a build-up of 12 scouts and there's going to be murder. You need to break them up, do something, yeah, or something's going to happen. This is before that happened to me. 
Y, 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 eh, 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 I'll get about a quarter of a million quid at the end of the day. Yeah, right, right. I'm not settling for anything less. You understand? Yeah, right. If the judge says give him 90, well, give him 90, but I've got them. You understand? I've got them. My documentation, you know what I told you before? I document everything. Yeah, yeah, right. Time and date stamp. I, 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 I do it all. Yeah. They the, 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 the screws charge me with a failing, failing to follow an order. And Governor Ashcroft, I'm witness someone, he's getting witness summons. Yeah. Because they can tell the lies from the box. If you put somebody in a box in the in the dock and they lie, and you bring rebuttal evidence and they lie, do you know what happens to them? Ask Jeffrey Archer. Ask Jeff, it's called perjury. Lying from the dock and you get caught lying from the dock is perjury. The only person that you can't witness summons is the Queen. Yeah, I can witness summons any of them. Yeah, if you can, if you've got the wherewithal to, to 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 go to court and do that, yeah, yeah, you can witness summons any any of them. So I'm witness, I'm witnessing summons. Siobhan Blake, head of the CPS. DC four eight four nine Lucy Neal, Governor Ashcroft, and. Security Governor Platt. And all these, this is getting took to trial? L listen, listen, listen. They're trying to stifle the trial. Yeah, yeah, right. It's took, it's took three years to get it. It's, it's took three years to get it listed. It's took three years to get it listed. Listen, I've, got court, I've got court dates and court numbers. So see all that stuff. Obviously the reputation you had, Stephen, everything you've done from the 80s and 90s and learnt the nicknames, the devil, the tax man. A lot of people are saying now that you're a grass. Yeah. What is this story? Is it, can we clear that up, or is it yeah, true? Yeah, or is it yeah, false? Yeah. Listen, listen. I've been hearing that I'm a grass for thirty years. Yeah, I've been asking them to put the statements online on on who I've grassed on. Yeah. So when they can't put the statements online to prove I'm a grass, they move it to a more paid police informer, and that I get paid by the police to give them information. In 2008, there was a panorama program called Young Gunmen. I was shot at while that program was getting made. Yeah, um, on Selborne Street. I know who shot at me. Yeah, if you watch Danny Dyer, there's a kid that comes on, comes on it, and he goes, he can't come round here, he got shot at you the week, he's a grass. That's the kid that shot at me. Yeah, he's in jail now. Grass his dad up. Yeah, give, give evidence in a murder trial. I won't call his name because you can get Nick for that, for the shooting me. Yeah, give, give evidence in a murder trial. Yeah, yeah, stood in the dock and said, he killed my mate. Yeah, and he's got the cheek to call me a snitch. So, DCI Andy Lynch, high up, high up copper at DCI. They contact me and they say, Stephen, your life's in danger. These young fellas, they're going to get you. Why don't you come in and see us? We can help you. We can look after you. I've got the letters. So I say, okay, I'll come in and see you. Yeah, and I'll see what you've got to say. They take me to Rose Lane Police Station. Officers with no insignia, officers with no insignia come on. I'm a twat for secret recording devices. I'm a twat for that. I've been doing it for years. You understand? I've got me recording device secreted about my body, yeah? So they can't deny this, you understand? They can't deny this. 
They say, these kids are going to get you, Stephen. They're going to murder you. This is what we'll do with you. We can't expunge your record. We'll give you the new name. We'll give you the new ID for you, your wife and the kids. Yeah, and we'll give you a thousand pounds a week, 50 grand a year. All you've got to do, yeah, is make statements and, t- and, and tell us, because they wanted, to, these, these were cause of murder. Yeah, they got, they got a hundred years between them in the end. Yeah, because they carried on shooting people. Yeah, he says, he says, he says, eh. Uh, And all your problems will be over. Grand a week, new ID. All you've got to do is stand in the dock and say you shot at you. Be a grass. Is that what they're asking me to do? And this is what they're all telling me that I am. Yeah, I'm fifty. I'm fifty. Sorry, yeah, it was two, I'm forty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're offering me a bag a week to roll over. Stand up, James, and I block out the light, man, with my big shoulders. And I say, you got no fucking idea about who I am, have you? Do you really think I'm going to roll over for the thousand pounds a week? You could give me 50 grand a week, I'm not going to roll over. And I've got the tape recordings for now. Yeah? I was offered witness protection to become a snitch. I refused it. Nobody can put the statements online. Eddie Atta, who phoned me up, who phoned, who phoned up and said he raped a woman and, he's, and, and, and they're going to turn him into the next Jimmy Savile. Eddie Atta stood in the bro- bro- dock, pointed at his own brother, Stephen, and said he chopped me with a chopper. See my fingers, James? They mm-hmm. don't come up. I was stabbed off my sister. My three tendons was cut. The police came to see me. He said, George Allen stabbed you. I said, no, she didn't. She was mugged. She never got questioned. I've never snitched on anybody. And I wouldn't snitch on anybody. And if I did, they'd be saying it for 30 years. You'd think the statements would be online. You'd think if I'd made the statements, somebody wouldn't have it. You'd think that, that, that they wouldn't love to say, there you go, there they are. Yeah, and then as, as for the police informer, well, I don't know any information to give them, yeah. Me and the police don't like each other. I've got them in court, yeah. I'm always exposing them on, on, on TV. Every time they pick me up, they beat me up. So this is what it's about, James. Yeah, it's got its roots in racism. Yeah, all the white boys that I've robbed... And the way I've gone round this city, this city, they can't do nothing with me. Yeah, because I've done them all. I've had it with them all. The Golden Gloves gym, I used to train in. It was a white boys gym. I used to train in that gym. Yeah, Mike here and the warrior come in. Yeah, right? And put a stuff on my peg. Yeah, I said, there you, you big. Get it off. Do you know why I am? I said, you'll be on your backside if you don't get that off the peg, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm the real deal, mate. When it comes to fisticuffs, English, British, European, and world kickboxing champion, Wacko all stars, it's all in the books. It's not made up. Meanest men in martial arts. Martial Arts Hall of Famer. Yeah, knocked 39 men out in competitions and street fights. Yeah. So, what do you do with a person like that? Got to kill him. If you can't kill him, you just, just they, they, listen, they need it to be true about me. Yeah, because I'm Teflon. I never went to jail till I was in my 50s. Yeah. Is that why they call you a grass though? Because you never did any time between 20 and 50? Listen to this. I went to jail in 1990. 1990. Listen, when you can't do something about somebody, it's it's like this. It's like this. Yeah. I'm in jail. Yeah. Alfie Lewis is my best friend. 
He's telling people, I'm getting me dick sucked in jail. <laughs> you understand? This is me boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, James, if I was gay, yeah, 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 I'd be upfront about it. Yeah, if I was jail gay, I'd say, yeah, I bang men in jail. Because I'm upfront about whatever I do. Yeah, I'm not a hide around the corner type of guy. Now, I've got bisexuals in my family. I'll never out them, but they let me take the rap for them. You understand? <laughs> I'm a grass. I'm a police informer. I rape men, women, boys, and my own baby daughter. This is the this is the stuff that they, 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 they try to put on me, and they all want to believe it's true. Twice I've been beat. I've been beat off a lad called John Island. Yeah, when I was 11. And I've got beat off Eugene, Lam- Eugene Lamb's cousin when I was about 14. I've lost two fights. Yeah, I've had hundreds. I've been beat twice. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've been jumped. Yeah, yeah. The most I've handled that's jumped me is four on my own. Yeah, yeah. F- through my martial arts. But... It's cause I'm a larger than life character. It's because I'm well known. It's because they write books and TV programs about me. It's because there's a possibility there'd be a movie there. It's 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 envy. Yeah, listen. It even happens with the I've got I know I know a I know a silver service waitress and uh Police were having a Freemasons dinner at the Hilton Hotel. And on the top table, she was serving them. You all start getting well, well oiled. Yeah, they're talking about me. The upper team, we've got to bring him down. This is the top coppers. Who does he think he is? Driving around in a 50 grand Lexus with the roof off and the sunglasses on. Never worked a day in his life. I had a security firm, 500 lads working for me. 500 families relied on me, mate. So, it used to wire me up. Today, there was a, there was a post on Gangland Britain. Yeah, yeah, right. He's a grass, he's that, he's this. So I just go on their page, get a photograph of them, put it on the post and call them a nonce. You can't go, you're calling me a grass, I'm calling you a nonce. This guy was going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Loads of them just disappear. I phoned them up and everything. They, they just carry. Me and him going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. He says, I'm reporting to admin. I said, isn't that snitching? Isn't that? Didn't you just call me a snitch? And now you, wanna, you don't want to carry on. Because I'll do it with you all day long. Do you know what a packy dam is? No. It's the group name for thick-skinned animals like a rhinoceros, an elephant, a hippo, and a Stephen French. <laughs> Very thick-skinned, yeah. brother. Very thick-skinned. Yeah, yeah, right. And then, uh, um, um, I bring Mike Tyson to Liverpool. I bring Ivan the Holyfield to Liverpool. I bring Ivan the Holyfield to Toxtuff and I'm bringing him to Moss Side, and I've got, him to- I've got a boxer talking about kids to join martial arts. How did you get them to your manner? Personality and charisma. How, yeah. how, how, per- personality, charisma, and my own dollar. How was Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson's, Mike Tyson's a real guy. I find the Holy Field's a bit strange. Yeah. Very difficult. Yeah, right. Doesn't trust black people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not an Uncle Tom, but he, he, uh, and listen, listen. Uh, in, ter- ter- in terms of in ter- terms of athletes and, and, and fighters, yeah, I've met them all: Roberto Duran, uh, uh, Ray Leonard, yeah. My one of my best friends is Brian Schumacher. Here, here's one for you. You, you like this? When we're on, when we're in, when we're in, when we take over the doors, this is my crew. This is this is my crew. Andy Palmer. Former ABA boxer, 
Brian Schumacher, white guy, yeah, 1984 Olympic team captain. Jimmy Price, 1982 Commonwealth gold medalist. Stephen French, world champion. Andrew John, British karate fighter. Black guy, they couldn't touch us. They took the door off us, you know what for? 21 incidents of violence in a month. We just, just knock people out. How do we... Uh, it was all over the papers that you were in the box at Liverpool sitting next to the players. Why did that get such... Why was that such a big uproar? Listen, there was a journalist called John Siddle. I got that hack the sack. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Me and him were going at it. See, see I go at it with them. And I, I go at it with them online. Yeah, and then... And then my arguments are flawless. You understand? The way I put it across, there's no way you can go. And I made him look stupid online. Yeah. Now, I've been a Liverpool supporter my whole life. Yeah, yeah. John Barnes is my mate. Yeah. I know a lot of the football players. And a lot of the football players like me. You understand? Didi Haman loved the devil stuff. You understand? Yeah. And, and, and I was invited into the box. Can't say you buy. It went viral. It went in European papers. I'd only gone the match. John Siddle writes, a 15-year-old boy came up to him and said, oh, Stephen French is sitting with the footballers, they might get shot. Lies. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> but, 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 listen, listen, listen. If I said to you, if I said, if I, if I said, if I told you over, over Christmas from December 2015 to January 2015, I fed and clothed a dozen homeless people, put them up, give them everything they need in one of my places, the whole works. Yeah, yeah. Nobody would believe it. You wouldn't read it in the paper. If, you did, if somebody said to you, you just push the granny off the step and rub the purse, everybody would believe it. But it's the first one that's true. Because my good work, I don't go around saying, this is what I've done, this is what I've done, this is what I've done. The kid, Sean Westy, on the, on the Young, Young Gung programme, yeah, yeah, he's one of the first white kids I mentioned. He hung himself. His mum's just died. Their Dylan's in prison. Their Craig's in prison. Yeah, they've been stitched up by Merseyside police. The good lads. But... They get treated like black kids, man. Do you feel as if you fight every day of your life, no, Stephen? No, 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 no. It's, 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 listen, listen. Like battling. Listen, listen, it's, it's, it's something I've chose to do. Yeah. It's, it's a warrior spirit. Yeah, right. Now, what you've got to remember, yeah, right? I understand social media. Yeah, it's a fraction of people. You understand social media the same as I do. You're yeah, right, and it's a fraction of the people making a noise. The majority of the people are with me. The majority of the people that support me, the people that contact you and say, "Get them on, get them on, it'll be great." Yeah, I've got loads of support. Yeah, the ones that don't like me are full of envy and jealousy, or they just don't like black people. Do you think? How do you feel about your life now? Do you feel safe? Are you getting older? Or do you, do you think there's a hat out in your still to this day, Stephen? No, listen, listen. All my enemies are dead or in jail. Yeah, all my enemies are, are dead or in jail. And just, just like Jim Kelly, if it comes to me, I'd be too busy looking cool. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, I'm not scared of dying. Now, what, what, what is me Achilles? Is me family. Yeah, 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 right. Because when they can't do me, I was I was going with a girl. Yeah, yeah. We didn't used to have sex. Yeah, right. But we were living together. She was a rape victim, and I was I was accused of rape. And we found each other, and we were comforting each other. Yeah, and was Sally. The abuse that girl got for being with me, man. Racist death threats. She had to get special measures put on her house and moved. How did the documentary with Danny Dyer come about? It came off, it came off the book. A company called Zigzag did the book. Yeah. Now, it, 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 here's, another fact, here's another fact for you. Pilot episode, season one, episode one, 
which you think is the most viewed? Yes. Yeah. By double. By double. Yeah. Um, the devil sold. The devil sold forty thousand copies. You're lucky if you're doing an autobiography to get ten. You understand? They're good figures. Yeah. Now, now everything I say to you, yeah, yeah, I can prove because as far as as far as any, it, it goes back to my childhood that, that I'm a dirty lying black bastard. That's what they labeled me and I internalized it. So I have to prove everything I say. It's it's one of me, it's one of me uh, coping coping mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 my quack told me. What was Ross Kemp like? Ross Kemp was a lovey. That's all I can say. Uh, he was a lovey. See, when you were doing these documentaries, but did that give you a new sense of power? A lot of attention come with that? Um, see, see, if you read in, the, see, see, if you read the book, it's all, it was all a means to an end. Yeah, I don't want I don't want anybody to give me any money. I want to raise it myself legitimately, and I want to build my 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 mate that was made is Andrew John, yeah, the Andrew John Memorial Skill Center. That's what I want to do. No race, no creed, no background. Teach the young men a skill carpentry. Listen, when I had the security firm, yeah, I used to make them take lads on, and give them jobs. I've given loads of lads work. Loads and loads of lads have had jobs off me. Yeah, yeah, right. Because all these the kids that do talk to me, you know what they say to me? I'm gonna make me fed. If I'm not if, if 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 I've got no food, drugs, if I've got no food, I'm gonna make me fed. Don't give a man a fish, teach him how to fish. Yeah. He feed himself forever. You understand? Yeah, right. Now, 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 I, I got the, I got the, the long way round, James. You understand? And I try my best, yeah, right, to help those who want to be helped, not to do that stuff. You understand? Not, 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 because, because, here's the thing, James, it was all a mug's game. Yeah. My friends were murdered. I lost my liberty. My family were put under duress. If I had my time over, you know what I'd do? Change it. I'd be a plumber. I'd be a plumber, mate. Yeah, and I think that's great to touch on because everybody that's on the show don't glorify anyone, even though everybody wants to hear listen, about listen, the crime, the, the pain, but you've got to think about the victims, the, the ripple effect of the misery it causes the listen, destruction. Listen, I've said to you, and I've apologised in the book, and I've said to you, I feel deep shame, and I've also taken my responsibility for the explosions of firearms, because people had to protect themselves from guys like me. Yeah? Which brings us nicely, James, to why I got caught in a city centre with a fake gun and a machete. Yeah, so you're very anti-gun. But then you get caught with a gun. Did you feel that happy crit? Did you feel um, you let a lot of people of, down? Listen, 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 listen. Of course, it was a hypocritical act. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not an anti-gun campaigner anymore. I can't be. But nobody can stop me from being a, a peace campaigner. But let me tell you the story. You get right, right. You've got a flavour of the pressure my life is, haven't you? You've got a flavour of the pressure that's put yeah, on yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R right. So let me take you back to 213. Yeah, yeah, right. Let me take you back to 212. Yeah, when I'm when I'm driving around with uh, Evander Holyfield. Yeah, 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 right. Too toxic. It's driving them mad. Yeah, you're right. They want to kill me because I'm successful. Yeah, so... I'm, I'm snorting Charlie like it's going out of style. You understand? I'm, I'm, I'm getting high too regular. Yeah. And, and he wasn't a businessman. They say he was a businessman. Yeah. He tried to jack a kid for 400 quid and the kid came to me. 
And I paid him the 400 quid that the kid owed him. And because I paid him the 400 quid, he thought I was weak. You understand? Yeah. He did. Paul Smith. Yeah. Because I paid him the 400 quid, he thought I was weak. Yeah. And we were doing pensions in a... El Plaza, you know, we were doing pensions and, and I, was, I was running a, de a de uh, commercial debt recovery service, yeah, making Brewsters, yeah, at all the, the, the down floors, the, all the, all the uh, executive offices on the first floor, yeah, yeah, money in the town. What's he doing in this building? Yeah, 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 I've got the old place rented out, yeah, I've got 10 phones going, yeah. This guy, Wants to try and snaffle the business or, or do something. You're right. And, and so we decide, it's going backward and forward. Then he tells me he's going to end me. Then he tells me he's going to shoot me. Yeah. Then he threatens my family. Yeah, yeah. So we're going through, so, so I told you about the homicidal ideation, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, I get to a point where I think murder's a good idea. Yeah. I've got papers from prison where the psychiatrist has said, this man sometimes thinks murder is a good is a good solution to a problem. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't like guns. I'm a swordsman. Yeah. So I bought a machete. Do you know what for? I was going to behead him. Yeah. I'd had enough. All the pressure that was going on, all what was doing with the police, yeah, the taking the drugs, I cracked wide open. You understand, James? Yeah. I cracked wide open. Yeah, so I went into Callan's and I bought the machete. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, let me set it up this way. Let me set it up this way. <clears throat> I was married. You put your hand up my wife's skirt, all bets are off. You touch any of my kids, all bets are off. Yeah, right. I will go and do life. Yeah, I won't. I won't. I won't. Um, um, try to stealth you. Yeah. I won't try to sneaky do anything sneaky. Yeah, yeah. I'll just attack you with a machete. Yeah, yeah. And you'll have no chance. Now, now, I'm not professing that. I'm telling you how I think. Yeah, I'm not saying that because I don't want this not to get into the to the to, to, to the podcast. This is the, what my brain was thinking. Yeah, right. And I'm setting it, I'm setting it up because because I still think that way. Yeah, yeah. I still think that way. Yeah, yeah, right. People say if somebody done something to my kid, I killed him. I mean it. You understand? Don't start telling me you're gonna do something to my kids. Yeah, because I've had my life. Yeah, I'm a samurai. Yeah, I'll chop you up and kill myself. Yeah, I ain't doing no more jail. You understand? I'm not going back to prison. Anyway. So I've bought this job, eh? And I'm going to chop him. And I'm in Callan's. Yeah, right. And I've also had... A spiritual awakening. I've always believed in God, James. Always. Yeah, the Catholicism was, was was drummed into me. Yeah, I'm not a Catholic, but I believe in God. You understand? I believe in the Creator, and I believe in the blood of Jesus. And people decry me and laugh about my spiritual beliefs, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah, right. I know what I am, and I'm in the same place. And I'm thinking about killing this guy. But there's another voice saying, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. And I see the fake gun. And I think, I'll pistol whip him. I won't kill him, I'll pistol whip him. <sighs> he went to hospital, I went to jail. You understand? He went to hospital, I went to jail. The only thing that I regret about it, James, 
and I wrote a letter of apology to the Echo about this, is after I'd done it, I realised that I was on CTTV, yeah, because I chased him out the building, yeah, I chased him into the foyer. And there was a young girl, a young receptionist who worked there. I used to talk to her, I was friendly with her, but I knew she was wary of me, yeah. And I've got this thing in me and she, nobody knows it's fake. Yeah, and I walk over and I say to her, give me the CCTV. Because I've took the CCTV out of quite a few places when I've done stuff. Don't take no evidence, you get me? Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm thinking now when I realise the blood's calmed down and realise I'm on video. She, she's petrified. She says, I can't, it, it's stored at a separate location. Yeah, but I terrorised her just by asking her. Yeah. They published a letter. I wrote a letter of apology to her. Him, he can go and fuck himself. Who is he? He was just some up and coming guy. Just, just, just the next one in a long list. Why I, why I left, listen, I didn't leave Liverpool. People say, French, you got run out of Liverpool. I left Liverpool in, when I came out of jail in, 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 in 216. I was 56. I was 56, yeah, and I had, to, and I had probation and the police bleeding down my neck. I needed a different probation officer. Yeah, I needed to be out of that jurisdiction. And you know what, James? The best thing I ever did get out of Liverpool. Who was that sentence for you? Your first big sentence. That was listen. I've only done. I've only done done one sentence. Yeah. That who was, for, was it? Uh, At that age. Um. See, see, see. But did you ever think, right? I've got away with so much. I probably listen, deserve listen, this listen, one. Listen, listen, listen. I've paid my debt to society. I'm fully rehabilitated. I did my prison. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I didn't do prison for. Yeah. Yeah. But I also did 12 months that I shouldn't have done for, for, for a rape that never got off to the police station. So it swings and roundabouts. And I'm a fair guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I've drawn a line under that. Yeah. I've drawn a line under that. I ain't going back to jail. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I'm retired. I've I've tried to let go of the violence. Yeah, I I see a psychiatrist over me crazy thoughts. Yeah, and that has helped me no end. Yeah, because here's one for you, and you might understand this: the trauma of being charged would rape, reactivate the child trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what I've been diagnosed with? PTSD. Complex, complex PTSD. Yeah, yeah. It's very complicated. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, don't, I refuse medication. Don't, yeah, yeah. I've had enough medication to last me a lifetime. Self-medicated on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so yeah. I don't want to be, but... Yeah, so, so, um, I'm on a journey. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's not over for me. Yeah. I help a lot of people. Doing help. what? I do voluntary work. Yeah, yeah. For an organisation that will remain nameless. Yeah, yeah. I meet young men from prison, as I meet it in Greece. Eh? I take them to the probation officers. Yeah, I take them to do the social, the social security. I take them in my car and I get them all set up. Yeah, and then I keep a support network with them. Yeah, yeah, right, because, because I'm authentic. Yeah, I've been shot. I've been stabbed. I've been set on fire. I'm a well-known OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, kid, it's a mug's game, get a job. What was it like being set in fire? Petrol bombed. Petrol bombed. Um, there you go. There you go. Cream Nightclub. North End Elite 
white white doorman. Yeah, yeah, right. Somebody goes to the door and wants to get in. Yeah, wants to get get in the nightclub. They won't let them in. They say, "I'll be back with Frenchie." I don't even know the kid. That night, Dave Smith, Dave Smith, his house went up in flames. His kids were burned. Yeah, yeah, right. He started burning all kind of houses down. Yeah, the petrol bomb my the petrol bomb me, me Lexus first. Yeah, and then the petrol then the petrol bomb my house. The police came and see me. And they, do you know what an Osman warning is? Yeah, yeah. They get, yeah, they gave me an Osman warning. So I said to the cop, the cop is doing this with his radio. Oh, they're gonna get you. So I said to him, is it Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Or is it is it um King Kong? Do I have to be worried? Anyway, I find out it's this kid called this kid called David David Smith. Yeah. So I said to him, I wanna meet you. Yeah. He goes, What? I said, I wanna meet you. He says, I'll meet you in town, come on your own. We'll meet at British Home Stores because it's on Tingo. I said, No, bring one with you and I'll bring one with me. He brought John Hogan with him. John Hogan hates black people, or he did. Yeah, yeah right. I don't know how he feels now. Yeah, so, so, so he meets me. When I see this kid, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen, have you seen, have you seen Clive Bowen and King Arthur? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the Saxon king's talking to him and the Saxon king just turns his back on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I seen this kid, I just gave him me back. Just turned around. That's respect. Gave him me back. Took him inside. Yeah. So sitting down. Yeah. My brother's with me. My brother, not a well guy. Yeah, is with me. Yeah. And he's just saying, let's just do them. Yeah. We'll do the bed. Let's just do them. So I said, no. The man's lost his children. So I said to him, I'm a family man. Yeah, yeah. You're a family. He goes, I don't care. I said, don't you care about your other children that are alive? He goes, yeah. I said, listen, mate. You know me. Whenever I've ever, I've ever had a problem with a man, they've never had to look for me. I'll knock on the front door. I'll fight them in their own backyard. Yeah. Now, I know, Dave, you're the good little one. But I'm a good biggin. I'll take it outside and kick it up and down the road right now. Yeah. And I'll say this live because he knows it's the truth. You understand? Yeah. I'm going to give you the pass because your kids died. Yeah. And the attempt of the firebomb on my house, yeah, it only burnt the curtains. But two days before that, I had all, my, all the kids in the house. They all went home. Yeah. My words of iron rang true to him. He knew it wasn't me, and he put it to bed. So you were accused of killing his kids? My mate Andy Palmer. That's sad, man. Listen, listen, kids listen, listen, listen. My mate Andy Palmer is on his deathbed. Yeah, he's in a class of bridge, and he goes, Jim, Jim, he used to call me Jim. Jim, did you burn those kids? Yeah. And, and, and the reason my name was in it, if somebody went to the nightclub, they couldn't get in. And he said, I'm coming back with Frenchie. So I was in it. Yeah, right. I fight with men, mate. Yeah, I've got a policy. Yeah, I don't, I don't threaten families. I don't threaten women. I'm old fashioned. Yeah, yeah, I'm old fashioned. And this is an, this is another reason eh, 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 that the, the white kid boys don't like me. They know I can do it. They talk shit, they try to ridicule me, but they've seen me do it. Yeah. When I was working in the grafting, Tommy Gilday was still alive. Remember eh, eh, the lad was talking about Tommy Gilday? Oh, the dad, 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 dad. Yeah. Tommy Gilday had, had the North End on, on Loch. Yeah. He tried to come in the club. He ended up having a fight with Andrew. Andrew was bashing him. I bashed some of the lad. Yeah, and we stopped him from coming in. He said, he said he'd be back. Yeah, he said, we'll be back, we'll be back. We're going to sort this club out. Tommy Gilday, 
Yeah. 300 of them turned up. 300 of them turned up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those that were there, and it was in the echo, those that were there know this is the truth. Yeah, they know how many of them there was. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately for them, they brought a knife to a gunfight. You understand? Yeah, and 300 men with knives and a man with a gun. What's going to happen? Man with a gun wins. They took off down the road. Me and Andrew Jones chased 300 of them down the road. Yeah, legendary stuff, mate. Legendary. Yeah, on the grafting, six of us they was. We chained the door. Tommy Smith, another elder black eyed black doorman, yeah, says, 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 uh, do you want to speak to you, Steve? We'll have a powwow. He's on the phone, he's on the phone to Andy Palmer. He's on the phone to Andy Palmer. Andy Palmer could fight. Andy Palmer was a boxer. Could fight like anything, but he didn't like the serious violence. And Tommy Gilday was about serious violence. Next level stuff. Yeah. So he's Andy's on with an iron on the phone. I've snatched the phone off Andy. Said, got another one here with your name on it. Boom! And put the phone down. You understand? Yeah. Because I was the devil then. You understand? I was vicious. Yeah, and I didn't give a damn. Tommy came and met us in Tommy Smith's house. We had a meeting. We sorted it all out. And do you know what happened? He started saving Andrew with Brown and we made a fortune together. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what people don't know. Yeah, or what do you, what do you like to brush under the carpet? You understand? No blacks can come in this club. Six doormen we knocked out and said, get off, drink champagne all night. Said to the manager, phone the police. See what happens to you. Yeah, took the colour bar off. It, they didn't take it off. We took it off. Yeah, so the black kids could go into town. Yeah, nobody... It's... It, 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 I don't... I don't look, look, look. I don't say it to glorify yeah, when I get accused of being a coward, it riles me. Yeah, because I'm no punk. Even at 60, I'm no punk. You understand? And, and, and it winds them up. It, wind, it, wind, it winds them up. I'm a lump, and I'm a lump that knows how to hit. Yeah? I'm a lump that knows how to hit, and I've got the commitment to hit. You understand? It's a lethal combination. You've spoken about your friend Andrew a few times, your best friend who was murdered. Yeah. What was your life like once that happened? Did you ever think, right, enough's enough, I'm getting out, I'm moving away, or did it just fuel you with more no, fire? No, no. See, 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 he died in 91. Do you know when I packed in? 94. I packed in 94 when I held my daughter in my hand. What, that hand? Yeah. This, these were my prospects. Mega rich, murdered, or life in jail. They were my prospects. If I didn't make some changes. I opened a security firm called Crimeox Security. Biggest security firm in the Northwest. Yeah, and about 500 men working for me. Yeah, and then, you know what a QS is? No. Quantity is fair. They liked me. I used to give them a good service. I had rent all, all the car showrooms. Yeah, the cars would go missing. They phoned the police, so the police couldn't get them. I'd get the cars back in five minutes. Yeah, the black kids come down, rob the TV. I go up to the house and say, give the telly back. Yeah. So I had all these contracts. And it was the builders that got me into the property. Two, two ups and two downs. You get me? Which legitimised me. Legitimised me through my accountants. Yeah? A lot of stuff went to, a lot of, my money's in a mess. A lot of stuff went on when I went into prison. Stuff went on with my wife. Stuff went on with this. And there's still st things that get getting wrangled. Yeah, right? Right? I'm not, I, I haven't got what I had, but I'm okay. You understand? And I'm happy. Yeah? I'd love 
to have a better relationship with my grandchildren. Yeah, but I understand. Do you not see them? Listen, listen. Imagine, imagine I go, imagine I go and take my grandkids out in Liverpool and some prick sees me and fires one in, into the car. My daughter don't want to take that chance. And I have to accept that. Yeah, that's understandable as well. Listen, listen. I accept that. Yeah, right. I love them unconditionally from afar. I've made a lot of sacrifices. Yeah, but but um, um, if if I was gonna pay a compliment a compliment to myself, it would be I have great fortitude. You understand? I have strong fortitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And I can cope with a lot. Yeah. And at heart, I'm a family man. I raised my children. Yeah, I went to private school. Yeah, I wasn't a deadbeat dad. You understand? Yeah, right. But the kerfuffle that wages around me on Merseyside is ridiculous. Yeah. Now, I'm down south. They followed... I was, listen, listen. I went to London in April 17. Yeah. By August... They were following me. You understand? Do you still get hassle? Listen. Um, <sighs> From the cops? No, no, London police are all right with me. Mm -hmm. Do you feel lucky to be alive, Stephen, this day to hit 60? I wasn't supposed to make it this far. You get me? I wasn't supposed to make it this far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, five bombed, shot. Shot on the leg, shot on the arms, yeah, stabbed, yeah, yeah, a, a money put on my life a couple of times. Fantastic story. So when I got the Osmond, Osmond warning, yeah, there's a guy, I won't call his name, he's a chaplain, and he used to work at the life bar. He's the only guy, and I, I it was, it, was going on, it was going on between us and the 051 crew, the, the, the lynches. Yeah, yeah, right. And I went to go into a, a life bar. And he stopped me from going in. But not only did he stop me from going in, he squared up to me. I will call his name. His name's Ian Hollywood. Yeah, Ian Hollywood squared up to me. I said, you're not going in. Tony Bellew Senior was his boss. I said, put a call into Tony. Just do me a favour, put a call into Tony. He put a call into Tony. Went in. Turns out Ian had an Irish connection. And the Irish lads were coming to kill me. Yeah? If the Irish are coming to kill you, you're going to get killed. You understand? What's his name? Oh, Joey Owens, he wrote in, he's got a book called Door Wars. Yeah, in his book, he says that I was crying and screaming for my life. Like dirty, stinking, lying chappy. Yeah, never happened. Never happened. Yeah, right. The thing snowballed. Yeah, it got out of hand and never took place. I've been in prison in 2013 and I get a letter from me in Hollywood. I don't think you'll remember me, Stephen. Blah, 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 blah. Now, got to remember yet, yeah, right? I mean, I'm depressed. I mean, I, I'm alive. I'm the first time I'm in jail and everything's closing in on me. Yeah. And I get this letter from this, from this white guy. No offender. Supposed to be a racist. Yeah apologising and asking for forgiveness from me. So I, so I wrote back to him, got the letters, and, and I said, of course I remember. And I forgave him. Now, there's a, there, there, this, this, is the be this is how things can be sorted out. Me and that mum were going to kill each other at one time in our lives. Yeah, he's now, he, he now, 
This man, yeah, works out all the hay, yeah, and gives the kids last rites before they go up to meet the maker. Yeah, yeah, that's his job. You get me? Yeah, yeah. His heart is 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 unbelievable, and he's my best buddy. And he's about to kill each other. And we, and we sorted out cause cause of door wars and what goes on in Liverpool. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and now, with a pair of our men. Yeah, right. And he'll come down and I'll make him a curry and I'll go up and see him. Yeah, we see each other all over the country, wherever we, we, we are. Yeah, and we've got a fantastic relationship. And I love him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the future plans then for Stephen French? Where do you see yourself now? L- l- it's, uh, um, so. I came out of prison. And I've been working solid on my cases. Yeah. That's all going to be finished shortly. Yeah. I've got, I've got two companies. Yeah. Yamato Damashi. Yeah. Which is Jap- Japanese fighting spirit. Yeah. And I've got Massive and Agile Media. Yeah. 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 Right. I've got the film rights have been, have been optioned for my life story. Yeah, a script's being made in in, in in America, but we've got some legal wrangles with, with, with some of the people that have got claims on the book. That's got to be sorted out. What I'm, what I'm looking to do, yeah, right, yeah, is open my charity, Massive, men accused of serious sexual incidents falsely, yeah, and make a support network for individuals that went through me, but in a charitable way. I'm also going to carry on doing my mentoring. Yeah, yeah, right. And I'm not looking for nothing from nobody. Yeah, right. And if, if the movie kicks in, yeah, right, I've kept, I've kept. I haven't took a payment. Yeah, I want to I wanna get paid at the back end. Because if I get paid at the back end, yeah, right, that's when you get the millions. Yeah, yeah right. Just, we've got, it's been to Cannes, been to Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, yeah, right. It was called the 49th, 49th Lord, 49th Lord of Power. Yeah. They're now working on a title called Frenchie Urban Legend. Yeah. And 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 whether that happens or whether that doesn't happen is in the ether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm gonna carry on doing, yeah, yeah, right, right, is is staying out of trouble, staying out of prison, doing my charitable works, yeah. And, and hopefully, I want to start helping men that have been accused of, of serious sexual incidents falsely. Yeah? And, and, and um, um, I will be the personal yardstick on that. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, um, a rape is an actual crime. It's a crime committed predominantly by men against women. Yeah, and uh, uh, violence against women and girls, vogue, it's off the chart. Yeah, right. But there's also another crime that goes alongside that, that's been committed by women against men, and it's, it's cash for claims. These, t- these tried to, to, to send me to prison for 10 years, yeah, yeah to cash in. Yeah, and, 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 and the system tried to chew me up. Yeah, I took the system on. Yeah, it ate me, it ate me whole, but it couldn't digest me. It had to spit me out. Yeah, and and um, I moved from Liverpool, worked on my case. Yeah, and and I was tentative about doing this. I spoke to you about it, but I'm getting back into the fray. Yeah. I'm getting back into the fray, and 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 as you know, and um, you'll see the interest in me, because I predict that this podcast will do a million views. It's a big prediction. That means it will be the number one podcast out of over the hundred I've done. I've li- li- listen. I'm like Muhammad Ali. I call it when it's going to happen. Law of attraction. Yeah, yeah, I believe it'll do a million views. Yeah, because 
people are interested in what's going on with me. You understand? Yeah. And even my enemies are going to watch it. Yeah. And, and Well, the enemies are always the first to watch. Uh, so they are. But as, <laughs> yeah, the enemies are always the first to watch and it's crazy. It's a crazy world out there. Listen, listen, if I don't like someone, I ain't going to fucking watch them. Listen to this. See, see but you, you, you see, what's two of the most basic human emotions that are the most prevalent? Love and hate? No. Envy and jealousy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Off the chart. Yeah. Off the chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Envy and jealousy. Yeah, yeah. You be, they, 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 they won't like you because you're handsome. You understand? Stop it, Steve. Yeah, yeah. He's, a good, he's a good looking fella, isn't he? Yeah, you better believe him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice teeth and all that. Yeah. Oh, you'll you be thinking I'm after you now. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. I'm, I'm secure in my sexuality enough to say when another man's handsome. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and just because you're doing what you're doing, yeah, you're interviewing people like me, David Dyke. You're doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, right. And you're off your backside making something happen. Yeah. They'll dislike you for it. Of course they will. People make moves. What happens is I'll shine a spotlight on their missed opportunities because if he can do it, why can't I do it? People get, like you say, the green-eyed monster, the but I couldn't give a fuck. I'm very thick-skinned. I've been through too much in life to let things water off a duck's back with me. I know what I'm creating. I know where I'm going in life. And I know exactly what I want. It's as simple as that. I'm not harming anyone. Stephen. You know. I you believe... Know. Yeah. This is two hours, 45 minutes we've done. Perfect. I believe this is the longest fucking podcast, probably. So, is there anything you'd like to finish up on? Because you've had a roller coaster of a life. Is there anything that you want to finish up on to get it out there and speak your piece? Yeah. If you're of the mind where you don't like me, if you're off the mind where you think I'm full of shit, hold that opinion, but just leave me alone. You're entitled to your opinion because opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. <laughs> yeah, so just just let me do me. Because I like what you've just said, I ain't trying to put me in anybody else. You understand? Yeah. And, 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 um, my my days of of phoning people up and saying I'm going to meet you are over. You understand? I'm too old. Yeah, I, I, I've got a great. Oh, there's more grey in my beard than black. <laughs> yeah. So so. I want to help without being hindered. And that would be my message. Let me help who needs to be helped. When, when, I, when I started this peace stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah um, oh, uh, chop this in, chop this in somewhere. So I've gone to get rid of the gun and the machete. And because of my notoriety and I've been on the TV, an off duty policeman notices me. I marked the spot where they done it. Yeah, there was, and it turned out, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise that it was a fake one. Because if it was a real one, I would have got, a, I got three years. I got, I got, I got six years. I got two knocked off for a guilty plea. Yeah, right. So I got four and I did two. But then I got called back and I did one. So I've ended up doing three years jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three years jail for the lifestyle I've had. I've paid my debt to society. Yeah. I'm on the straight and narrow. I'm, I'm rehabilitated. Yeah. And the only thing that'll get me going again is if you do something to my kids. Yeah. That's the only thing that'll get me going again. And it's like this, you see. The bastardization of Sabuku is harikari. There's no such thing as harikari. It's a buku, yeah, right? Ritual suicide, yeah? When my instructor died, yeah, he trained 5,000 students, I got his sword, yeah, yeah right? Uh, he chose me to, to, to have his katana, 
yeah, because I'm a modern day samurai, yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, yeah, if 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 my family get dishonored, I know what I'll do, but I won't be doing no prison. You understand? So just leave us alone. Just leave us alone. Leave my family alone. Leave me alone. If you don't like me, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to do something to somebody, do it to me. But leave my kids alone, man. It's got on to do with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's the, this, this, these, these punks down. All they want to do is threaten your kids, man. What's that about? That's that's schoolboy stuff. That's not gangster. Yeah. You understand? That's that's yeah. So. Yeah, James, I'm happy. Yeah, well, uh, listen, Stephen, for coming on today and, yeah. and meeting yeah. me and telling your story, yeah. I appreciate that. And yeah. All the best for the future.